Hold on. Make sure that's obvious. Check, 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 check. Okay, there we are. Now the audio is working. Yep. Oh. So good to be here with you, Iggy. Mm hmm. Are you, are you about to press A? Let me know when you're about to press A. I've got a great one. Oh, you you oh I pressed A. I pressed it oh. a minute ago. Well, damn. Let's pretend you just pressed it, not with my winning line. Uh huh. Let's go, come junkie. Mm, right. That's an actual fucking song. Is it? It is. Okay. <laughs> There's one uh, that Coco really likes called Welcome to the Cum Zone. And it's just like this one dude who does these like. He does all of his readings like this, like it's Duke Nukem. And he just reads really messed up hentai. And so they just cut together some of the most ridiculous lines over like a, a hardcore uh, beat. Nice. Oh, Star Shower. Yeah, I started uh, Spot Finds. Hmm. I was just thinking about getting Pandora again, but then uh, Coco pointed out to me that you can basically do the same thing on Spotify. Yeah, you can. Uh, that's what I do. I just do like the daily mix one. Yeah. That's all I do. Um, but like, the problem with Pandora is it got to a point where I had homogenized my station so much. Yeah, I did that with the stand-up in my in my Pandora. Yeah. It's I'd I'd listen to one and then it would just basically sound like all of the other ones, and I would yeah. just kind of do that loop infinitely. Well, where it got bad for that with me wasn't that it was doing that, but that it was. Oh, what was it? It was. It had gotten into what it thought I would like because mm -hmm. I liked artists like Mitch Hedberg. Gaffigan, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, Stephen Wright. Things like that. So it presumed that I would ever, and this was before any kind of a scandal, but uh, Louis C.K. Mm. I never liked him, and I would block it like every time it came up. Well, yeah, even before the scandals, he was incredibly, like, abrasive, which I feel a lot of people, it resonated with some people, but I don't really know if that's something we should applaud. It just wasn't funny to me. Like, he told a joke about trying to get his daughter to eat, and his daughter's first sentence, and 
how proud he was that she was able to say, I don't like children. And then after that, it was just, I don't like him yelling at his kid in comedy style or something. If there's plausible denial, oh, it was a joke, I didn't really yell at my kid. And then, like, threatening to shove the chicken up her ass and shit with me. And I'm like, this isn't funny, but it's not, as a parent, like, that's not funny. Yeah, that's that's the thing I find with a lot of comedians is the um, edgier ones will uh, often only be edgy because they're pretty ignorant of why what they're saying is so out there. Yeah. And I mean, if you found the guy funny, uh, one over two says I didn't really like Louis C.K. before the scandal either. I saw one special and didn't like it. Found it a bit boring. Hmm. Yeah. I, it just, that's why I gave up Pandora, because, like, it just got so homogenized. And, like, yeah, the algorithm, for for a bit, it's it gets you into some new stuff, but it ends up not doing that much. Although, I mean, I found some of my favorite comedians through Pandora. Kyle Kinane I only found because of Pandora. Um, Kyle Kinane is one of the most frustrating comedians because he actively names the tracks on his album stuff that has nothing to do with with um the the actual bit like one of his albums the whole gimmick is uh each one is this is not fuck to police this is not intro skit it's like all it's all just this is not and whatever that track would be on uh nwa's uh, title album who was the guy that did that but he would do it during his act like this joke is called blah 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 blah, blah. oh uh dan cummings I think something like that. I always get him and Chris Delia mixed up. I've not heard, listened to a lot of Delia. I've listened to a bit. I, I I don't have like a problem with him. I just haven't taken the time. I always get them mixed up mentally because from what I remember, like and keep in mind, a lot of my stand up uh, experiences, not in person, not through specials, but through listening over car speakers because I would listen to the Bob and Tom show every morning when I worked for a newspaper. I would listen to Pandora while driving. And so I couldn't really get the names of a lot of comedians, right? Right. Like I, unless they repeated the name over and over on the Bob and Tom show. Which, which is why working in radio you're supposed to do. You're supposed to introduce uh, going into a commercial, coming out of a commercial, going into a bit, coming out of a bit. So that anybody who tuned in, uh, in, in a bit would uh, have a chance. Yeah, and for Bob and Tom show, they were very good about it, but they also just kept bringing on like the same comedians every fucking time. <laughs> and so, like after a couple of years, you've heard all these comedians. Um, but you know, some stand-ups I like now, uh, Titus. Oh yeah. This Especially, like, his shit on Twitter lately, standing up to, like, the police and Trump and all that. Oh, I actually haven't been seeing any of what he's done on Twitter. I kind of, I had to back away from t Twitter for a bit because, like... Oh, it's been, it, like, a while he's been doing it. So. It's it's a just a parade of misery. And yeah. I'm still following the, the news, and I do check it every now and then, but I was just, like... Pretty much the enti any time I picked up my phone, I'd spend, like, two hours just looking through all of the worst shit that's happening right now. Yeah. Um, but... either, for what it's worth. It's, so. it's working. Like, yeah. Minneapolis has straight up said that they're going to dismantle the police force, so that's, yeah, that's, that's positive. There was a police reform bill um, that Congress set up today, which is... I... Not exactly what people were asking for, but it's no. it's at least something, which is more than more than was being done Plums prior. Done, yeah. So I I think it's fairly obvious that you and I are extremely conservative, uh, right wing. Um, yeah, I think that's obvious, right? Like everybody. Oh, of course, everybody, everybody yeah, knows, man. I'm from rural Washington, you know. <laughs> I mean, I am from the rural South. So that isn't yeah, extreme. it's bizarre that we're not super right wing, like given where we come from. <laughs> yeah, like we are so, as left as left gets. Like, yeah, people don't get like 
um, Western Washington (laughs) by Seattle and by the coast and everything like that. That's pretty liberal. That's why it's a blue state. But like um, once you go over the mountains to the east, like two thirds of the state is just super rural, super conservative, right wing. Everything's just spread out, super redneck. And that's that's the part I spent most of my life before uh, before I got the hell out of there. Yeah, uh, I was actually talking to a friend of mine about where Corey and I grew up, because uh, she grew up there as well, and her nephew is the is protesting in hmm. downtown on the square, and she uh, is very proud of him, and I was like, man, I wish I could go up and join him, but like, you know, I can't. Um, that's the thing, like, I want to be out there right now. I know. I, I, I also, I feel that guilt of like, I feel like I should be, but it's, it, I'm just so far away from any, any place where it's happening. We're in Charlotte. We're not that far. Oh yeah. You're, you're pretty close. Um, but the problem is a, uh, social distancing and I'm not, yeah, like that's not the, like, um, I have no safe means of getting there. Right. Like, I can't take a car downtown, you know? A, because I just can't handle driving downtown. It's PTSD, but um, B, I don't have any other means of getting there without putting someone else at risk. And I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, especially after I saw a video today, cops puncturing tires of people. Yeah. Like, healthcare workers, uh, medics things like that just popping their tires and i'm like oh, fuck off and so i just my biggest thing is the only th- damage that's being done is property damage and as someone who owns a small business if you don't have insurance for your business your business was going to fail regardless so you know it's not the responsibility of others to make sure that your business does not get harmed you should have small business insurance already set up in case of something like this and if you didn't then you did not have a business yet. Your business was uh, being done poorly. Yeah. And so that kind of stuff, I'm just like, I'm doing everything else. Like, there's a lot of lists out there. Like, if you can't go to the protest, here's what you can do. And I've been trying to do yeah. everything on those lists that I could afford to do, at least. I've donated to a bail fund. Yeah. Uh, the the donations, I, I wish I could do more. Um, I got the, yeah. the Itch.io bundle that they've set up, which donates to the uh, NAACP legal fund and to the bail uh, fund. So yeah. that's if you're into games, that's a good way to get uh, like 700 games and also help with everything that's happening. Yeah, I just donated directly because I, I feel per- – and this is me. Like if, if that's what it takes for somebody to donate, then absolutely buy a shirt, buy a game, buy – whatever but it feels very like i guess tone deaf at the moment to be like yeah i mean there's something going on that i want to be a part of but what's in it for me yeah a little bit but at the same time there are some people who um would not donate if it wasn't for something like that like it'd be better for people to donate uh because they believe in the cause but like if yeah. people are people who are ambivalent towards it are also donating through that, like that's 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 something solid. Yeah. Uh, probably that too. So, yeah. So that. But anyway, how's the game going? It's going okay. Um, I'm just warming up with some Animal Crossing. I'm gonna do bigger streams and daily streams because there's no reason I can't. Honestly, like, I, I spend time playing games no matter what, so I may as well just stream it out and hopefully build some kind of audience through this. Well, yeah, and, you know, you do have one day coming up you won't be able to stream because you've got a couch coming, but... That's true. But, I mean, that's taking one day off rather than taking most of the week off, especially on the days where I had stuff scheduled and I just, um, my sleep schedule was so messed up that I just slept completely through it. Uh, yeah, I feel like feel like it's probably going to be more solid for whatever algorithmic stuff if I actually 
stream most of the week at the very least. It will help if you're doing it every day for more than like, I think it's something like at least an hour. Okay. But oh yeah. I'll pretty much all my streams. I think I've only had one that was below an hour and it was like 56 minutes. And like the longer they go, the better off they are and the more regular your schedule is. So like same time every day. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's really, I've been slipping on the, uh, consistent time, yeah. but what I did was I would stream every week on Thursdays at the same time. Uh, and I still just couldn't get a, an audience. It was annoying, but you know, hi, new viewer. Yeah. Hello. It's yeah, it's tricky. I mean, pretty much my viewers are usually you and one who I know from a from a Discord chat, which I definitely appreciate y'all watching. I do occasionally get some other randos who come through. Um I did I did a Super Mario Maker um stream a few weeks ago and someone actually sent a raid my way, which was it was only like 8 viewers, but I that was still very much appreciated. And that got me, like, four new followers. It's pretty good. Nice. So, I, I bought some empty cones at the CBD shop today. Hmm. Because I live in a state where CBD is legal, but nothing else. So, as far as the stream needs to worry, this is CBD in this cone. And, hmm. uh, like, they're from Amsterdam. Hmm. Uh, so, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give this a shot. And I picked up the plane, which is just hemp paper, you know. Right. Poem. But today I picked up the honey. So I'm excited to see if this will be any exciting, you know, flavor or not. Right. So I'm going to wait about a half hour before I light it up. Let me rephrase. I'm going to wait about 21 minutes before I light it up. But, um, yeah, like. It's been a it's been a day. I will say that like hmm. it has been a day today. Where we had I had to go grocery shopping, hmm. and this lady like so if you went grocery shopping and you had a buggy and the person with you had a buggy, right? And I'm sorry for all y'all non-southerners. A buggy's what we here in the South call a shopping cart. I was gonna say, yeah, that's that's one of the things that like I'm still getting used to. Yeah, buggy versus shopping cart. Yeah. It's just what we call it, like yeah, like a bug. It's like a little buggy. I mean, right. it makes as much sense as anything. Words are all yeah. made up. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So. Uh. This woman, if you went and had your own buggy and, you know, Corey had his own buggy, y'all were shopping together, you were going to check out together. What would you do if you got done filling your buggy and he wasn't quite done yet? Like, he had to grab another thing or two. Uh... You'd wait for him, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess. I, did, I didn't even think about that because it's, it's so obvious. So... This woman got in line. I'd get in line behind her. I'm in line for, you know, long enough to get all my groceries up on the belt. Yeah. You know, for a week's worth of groceries, including a 20-pound bag of rice. Mm. You know, just, ugh, rice. So I got all that on the belt. And then all of a sudden, I see the lady gesturing at me, like, behind me, hmm. over my shoulder. And she is just wildly, like, gesturing and getting angrier and angrier that I am somehow existent but she's not looking at me hmm. she's doing the kind of gesture that you would expect a mom to give oh. a young child who's like mom can i get this here she's like no put it back put it back go over there and put it no nope. nope. but i have my noise canceling headphones on so i hear nothing i hear absolutely nothing because if i'm in a grocery store and i'm alone i don't want to hear you like Full stop. This yeah. whole social distancing in the grocery store thing has been a godsend because I do not want people near me. Oh, look, there's a butthole in the dirt there. <laughs> that is and where the know. fossils are buried. Oh, that is where I bury the fossils, baby. <laughs> um, so 
you know, I am dead to the world at this point. Right. Next thing I see is her husband and child in their own buggy come around to the front of the thing. Keep in mind, she has made no attempt to, like, get my attention at all. As she far is, as, yeah. Yeah, I'm wearing, you know, my mask, I'm wearing sunglasses, noise-canceling headphones. She has not looked at me at all. And so everything is, so I'm assuming it's a kid. It's an entire, like, adult. Hmm. And he comes around and just hands each item in his buggy over to the cashier one at a time to add to their total. And I'm like, why? And, like, if he thought I was going to un, like, move out of the way and put all my stuff back in the buggy so that he could put his stuff up. No. No. You Not... should have gotten in line with your spouse, with your friend, whoever it is. You should have gotten in line together. Yeah, if you're getting... If you are getting a cartload of stuff, presumably the... you're going to be getting it together. I w You shouldn't be splitting up unless there's, like, a thing or two that you're getting. A what load? Listen. Listen to me. You look at me. A cartload. Okay? <laughs> I am going to start a web store that is the biggest, most famous web store. It's going to put Amazon to shame. It's going to be bigger than Amazon and Walmart combined. But there won't be a checkout cart. It will be a buggy. And everyone will be like, what? This store sucks! Five things in your buggy. Like, that's what it, and I'm going to do that for all the Southerners. Also, somebody had a really great uh, comment on Southernisms where uh, there's a portion of the South that calls soda Coke, no matter what it is. Yeah, yeah. And Apparently, not... Vsauce One, Michael, yeah. he that's what he does, even though he's yeah, from yeah. somewhere in the Midwest. Right. And so, um, I think he actually is Southern because he talked to Adam Savage about that. Well, the, I remember specifically, like, he said it was weird because he wasn't from, like, anywhere near atlanta or anything michael stevens i did like um when he said it to adam savage he was like oh you're one of those yeah <laughs> it's uh, like yeah Kansas city missouri hmm missouri's that's... kind of southern like that's where tom H or tom sawyer took place i mean that's a ways from the the coke central it is but you know it's it's in that uh I want a healthy relationship, but with toxic relationship sex. Mm. Oh, man. You know what's killing me is who retweeted that. I won't out them on the stream, but it's killing me who retweeted that. Hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll Facebook it to you. Okay. You might not even know who it is. Uh, um, that's a good question. Uh... I have the, the chat up on my phone, so I might yeah. not see it here. No, I'm not I'm not as familiar with that channel. Um I've watched uh -huh. I watched a few of the things on it, like Bravest Warriors, but I never uh, really got into the side stuff. If you'd seen her videos you would have. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. She is she uh kind of pushed a few people away from the channel by accident. Oh, no. Because it's a mostly family-friendly channel, right? Yeah, it's cartoons. Yeah, but then she talked about her desire to fuck Bowser. And Oogie Boogie is her biggest crush. Like, she, yeah. Okay. She yeah. likes the thick boys. She's a monster fucker, specifically. Mm. Like, when Halloween came around, she put up a video of her going, it's boogeyman fucking season. And then somebody off camera's like, don't you mean fucking boogeyman season? I said what I said. <laughs> That's, um... Th Lindsay Ellis made the whole video about, like, why culturally we shouldn't be that shocked that there's always, like, people who are into fucking monsters. But then we're also always shocked when people are into fucking, like, cartoon animals, even though... Like, 90% of people want to fuck Nala from The Lion King, or, like... I can say, 
for sure that I do not want to fuck Nala. Okay, but there's got to be at least one cartoon that you want to fuck. Aaron E. Shirts. There we go. That's acceptable. <laughs> do you know that's why she's not the mascot anymore? That makes sense. Uh, it wasn't... It was not because fan porn was made of her, but uh, because when you searched for her, the fan porn was some of the first stuff that came up. Listen. That was that was in an era when that wasn't the case for pretty much everything. Still. What's in my show? Oh, okay. I guess she hasn't worked back yet. Is Nala married? Is that how the lion hierarchy works? Do they even have marriage? Technically. Technically. Oh, uh, what? Flick. Hold on. Actually, we know that Nala and Simba would be because Zazu, at the beginning of the movie, says that they are intended, betrothed, affianced, then says, one day you two are going to be married. But, I, well, they weren't married when the obvious happened, which is pretty bold for Disney. But by the time Lion King, uh, two comes around and they have a kid together they would be because there's no way disney would have an unmarried couple having a child together uh yeah sure and they had straight up said that they would be married by the end or by the time they were adults so it's unlikely that you know yeah i mean it's pretty but at the same time the fucking lady in the tramp they those weren't, weren't his kids. The, those weren't his kids? They looked no. just like him. Hold on. I'm thinking of the Aristocats. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no. That's that's a that's a stepdad situation. Um, No, I mean, Lady and the Tramp, at the end, they have kids, but they uh, are by, dogs. They didn't have a dog marriage. Plot of Lion King 2. Yeah. Wikipedia. I mean, you don't have to tell. I it's a fucking masterpiece, dude. The Lion King two, Simba's pride. Yes. In the Pride Lands of Africa, King Simba and Queen Nala, his newborn daughter Kiara, is presented to the assembled listen, by Rafiki. Listen, we are we are past that point. I'm just saying they fuck. They fuck in front of Timon and Pumbaa. There's no way you can convince me they didn't, and they definitely were not married at that point. They were just recreating the scene from when they were kids. And she goes, ha, Pinji again. Mm. And that's when he, like, got his first erection because he had spent his formative puberty years with a warthog and a meerkat. Listen. So he didn't know what to do with that erection yet. Listen. He would have thought it was a new grub and tried to eat it. It... Trying, ah, I don't know enough about cat anatomy. <laughs> they do have the 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 barbed penis, or do lions though? Because I know that their thing is that they they mate like every like a few hundred times over the three day period that um the female is in heat. So here's the thing about prides, if I'm not mistaken, and. Keep in mind, this was from an infographic on the internet, so it's what we like to call an 80% fact. You can't say for sure it's true, but it sounds true Mm -hmm. for the most part. Kind of like the thing about Nemo's dad would have turned into a woman. Oh, yeah. So, So this is one of those things that... That one is true, by the way. This is one of those things that sounds true, but in Lion Prides... The head lion, like the leader of the pack, so to speak, Simba in this case, would be mating with many women. Yes. That means his father, Mufasa, mated with all the women in the pride. Yeah, which, which is why I'm Nala pretty sure. Sh- is his half sister. Yeah, half sister or cousin at the very least. No, we know Scar didn't have kids until Lion King 2. Well, yeah, but. We don't know that Scar is his only sibling. Uh, 
I think it's heavily implied at the very least. No, it's it's. Did Mufasa have multiple, not multiple? Pile. Now that we have or the Lion pile. Guard, like a lot of these lore questions have been answered or retconned in a lot of places. Uh, did, uh, it's my first, uh, t- a question often asked of Google <laughs> is Mufasa Scar's brother? Uh, hold on. Did you guys watch the movie? Hold on. Hold on. In the there is a glamour article by Christopher Rosa from twenty seventeen that says, um, Mufasa and Scars aren't actually brothers in the Lion King. What? It's literally it's, well, I guess okay, uncle does not necessarily have to be a blood relation. It can just be a a uh While making the movie we talked about the fact that this was very likely Scar and Mufasa would not have both had the same parents. The way lions operate in the wild, when the male lion gets old, another rogue lion comes and kills the head of the pride. What that does is causes the female lions to go into heat, and then the new younger lion kills the king, and then he kills all the babies. Now he's the new lion that's running the pride. Scar was just a strange lion who sensed Mufasa was getting old, so he swooped in and killed him. N- no, no. You can- no, you can't just apply lying. that, like... Like, that supersedes what we actually see in the text. Like, yeah, yeah, that would be the case if we didn't hear them directly talking to each other. Yeah. Also, it's messed up that Lion King 2 is called Simba's Pride, considering it's about his daughter. And I know that's what it's saying, is that, like, she is his pride. But also, also, like, that's... There's mm. a line that um, they're trying to use as proof, but it proves them wrong. Oh, that's always great. It's, if you pay close attention to the movie, Scar actually confirms he and Mufasa aren't birth brothers, but it's subtle. Hmm. I'm from the shallow end of the gene pool, he says at one point. That doesn't, that proves they I feel like they don't understand what a gene pool is. It makes me think of somebody, there was some idiot who made like, uh, a like top ten list or something that was like, oh, animated villains who are actually cool dudes you didn't know and one of them was rick sanchez and literally their point was like he says that they inherently love the mortys and then they show the line where he's like yeah every rick inherently uh is attached to morty so i had to remove that from all of them did that i think the fact that he that he wants to remove any love of his grandson is a lot more telling than the fact that it existed to begin with Rick and Morty conspiracy theory that I fully buy right now. Mm-hmm. And I will admit this is from back when I watched Matt Pat is one that Morty that we follow currently mm-hmm. is not the grandson of the Rick we follow currently. Okay. Like, it's not the direct, like, oh, we've been ignoring one over two. Uh, Mm -hmm. Nala is married. It's what Disney wants you to think anyways. We don't know how lion marriage works. Maybe it starts at a consensual sex. It's funny because they made Kovu adopted to make it not incest. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry about that one over two, by the way. We were not ignoring you. Oh, you're gone. Uh, But, um, so it's not his Morty. Because that Rick, or that Morty's Rick, and his mom, and Jerry, and Summer mentioned that it's been 20 years at the in like the first episode they mentioned he's been gone for 20 years right but when uh rick gets caught in like season two i want to say like when he's locked up in that prison by the insect people oh yeah the end of the and his family and the family's like on this tiny little planet oh yeah yeah they're, yeah. they're uh he meant he has his memories like displayed and this is at a point where no no it's when evil rick has him Mm -hmm. and we first see evil morty we see evil rick like ripping his brain open and looking at the memories and yeah later they imply that rick can fake his memories but this is not 
one of those times because this is Everick getting at Rick. Um, so he uh, has memories of Morty as a baby. He has memories of photos of Morty as a baby hmm. and playing with Morty as a baby. And then we find out that Rick is not real. It's a robot made by evil Morty. And that their whole thing was to get at that Rick. They wanted to frame that Rick for murder. They wanted to target that Rick specifically. So the theory is that that Morty is that Rick's actual grandson. Okay. And that, so evil Morty is our Rick's grandson. And the reason that he... Uh, so there's a point at which Rick will, uh, there's an episode where Rick's like, uh, I'll tell you when you're older, knowing too much uh, can be dangerous. Right. I've seen what it can do. And the implication in the theory is that, oh, that's because he made the other Morty, you know, as bitter and evil as he is now through whatever his actions were. I buy it. Like, it, it, it lines up for what they've been telling, and they keep, like, teasing Evil Morty. You find out Evil Morty doesn't really have an eye patch. You find out, you know, Evil Morty is positioning himself to rule the Rick Sanctum. The uh, Sanctum of Ricks. Uh, but he still has his eye on our Rick, so why? Hmm. Right? And for me, it just lines up with the theory that He's not, you know, doing it randomly. That was his literal grandfather, like the guy that gave birth to his mother, then him, right? Not a Rick. Right. And, you know, he abandoned Morty or maybe even tried to kill him. Uh, we don't have enough data there yet to know, but that's the theory. I buy it. Like it, it, it checks out. It scans. That tracks. Um, I yeah. In a lot of situations, I would say that that might be like overthinking the text. But with something like Rick and Morty, they yeah. I feel like they don't really make mistakes. They really don't. Like I'm not good at symbolism at all. Like I can't pick it up at all. It's just not something I'm good at, which is weird because I'm an editor. But, yeah. Um, it, like, if I see somebody, you know, falling with their arms out to the side, you know, I don't see a Christ figure, like literal sacrificial imagery. I don't see that. It's just not what I imagine. Like, I just see a guy falling in what is the most, like obvious way to slow your speed or whatever but like for instance if i see somebody like laid out on the hood of a car because that's where they landed if you land back first that's how your arms are going to splay out out to the sides feet below you because that's more or less the natural way of you know falling down like so i don't see like religious iconography and it makes me wonder if jesus had been like burned to death with his hands tied to his feet what would corpses look like in movies you know, yeah like superman you know like would they still go for that arms out like powerful looking pose or what you know but so that kind of thing is lost on me mm -hmm. but when you, if you explain it to me then i can see it all and when people sit down and point out, like, oh, here's this Rick and Morty bit that led to this Rick and Morty bit that led to this Rick and Morty bit, you're like, oh, I see the connections now. What I thought was just a throwaway joke wasn't. And there are throwaway jokes. I th And I feel like the Szechuan sauce thing was a throwaway joke. Oh, definitely. That was literally just, like, it's a classic improv technique of just, like... Rant, just ranting about a specific random thing because like um uh j just in general like it with improv you want to come up with a point of interest and something obscure like that is is definitely like can be a big point of interest um 
And in uh, in that situation, it's like it makes sense with what was happening in the plot. So yeah. it was definitely just a throwaway improv joke. Yeah. By the way, uh, one over two says it's probably so pervasive because it's easy to do unintentionally. The Jesus arms thing. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it, it's. I think there are times when it's intentional, and then there are times when it's like, no, that's just how it would look. You're reading too much into. It. I, I like the the quote uh, from a writer who was asked about the symbolism in his books because people kept seeing symbolism in his books, and he was like, there's no symbolism intentionally in my books. Sometimes the chair is just blue. Uh, yeah, but, you know, death of the author, you can really read whatever you want into it. Yeah, but, but like, I, I'm i not super into the argument of death of the author, like, there, there are moments because... where it's it's all it's almost necessary to be able to enjoy a work at all. If that's the case, I don't want to read the work. Then, like, I. But then again, I'm also one of those who cannot separate the art from the artist. Well, the thing, the thing I so always I can't enjoy like Smashing Pumpkins anymore. Oh, like, what did they do? Billy Corgan. Oh God! Um, Didn't hear about it. It's been a long so like. Uh, about a, 10 years ago or so technically billy corgan owns the name smashing pumpkins right um and so he went on a tour released a bunch of songs but only with new musicians under the smashing pumpkins name right and cut them out oh that's messed up yeah like didn't give them the option just took the name and like started new people um apparently Mm. i share a name with one over two yeah yeah um that came up uh a few streams ago when i was saying something to you and it threw one over two off which is how i learned that one over two is also named andrew by the way i'm not ignoring you one over two i'm switching over to a different window so i can look up the thing billy corgan did oh don't worry one is very used to me ignoring him because i get too focused on the game which i apologize for but it is technically the focus of the stream so <laughs> um, also billy corgan is the owner of nwa the national wrestling alliance oh uh... which you may remember is the promotion that free records everything and yep. then airs it weeks later and had jim Cornette as one of its original commentators on nwa power spelled with multiple r's mm-hmm. so um god he he started that and then jim Cornette got fired because of a racist joke he made while doing commentary that made it to air like they had weeks to cut it out because it's pre-recorded and he left it in yeah no um it's no good he also tried to buy to tna after I'm not gonna like I can't say shit about TNA because I'm not a huge TNA viewer so I'm not gonna shit talk TNA on that oh yeah I've not heard anything good about his time with the company yeah um Um, one makes a good point um like death of the author is is an option rather than it, it is actually uh death of the author is just one factor that can be implemented into your specific read of a work and often it's important to um read a work with different filters basically like uh the filter of death of the author the filter uh with the author's life in the context of what was happening in the book at the time uh through the filter of different social constructs of different things specific to what the culture was like for that author at the time the the one that i always go point to where death of the death of the author is kind of almost required is um uh uh dawn of the dead the original george romero dawn of the dead uh he said that there is no capitalist uh subtext at all which is impossible like yeah. as as uh, a YouTuber, I really love Scaredy Cats pointed it out. He's like, okay, but have you seen the movie? Because <laughs> it's very obviously like it, it's got zombies milling around a mall while Muzak plays. Like it's 
it's very obviously anti-capitalist like uh it might be symbolism. A case of, you know, Romero said that because he has to. Oh yeah, well th- the thing like, is to not actually agree with it. But... They've also claimed that the the main character in Night of the Living Dead was not originally supposed to be played by a black man, but like given the ending, I don't know. I feel like if those are if those are accidents, then he's the luckiest uh he's the luckiest <laughs> filmmaker on the planet to accidentally stumble upon such potent like symbolism and so... Yeah, I just, I don't know. But then if you watch some of his uh, more recent works, like Land of the Dead or Diary of the Dead, you kind of realize maybe he isn't actually that good of a filmmaker, and he did actually stumble on those things. And the fact that they were back-to-back just really helped out, helped his cause, as far as that goes. So, oh man, it would have been when I was delivering newspapers. That was about a two- to three-year period, uh, right... After Aiden had been born, so less than 13 years ago, so uh, nine. Uh, that's true. Yeah, that's that's something. Um... Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope. The lineup at the time included new bassist Nicole Fiorentino. And uh, if you scroll ahead in the story, new pumpkin drummer Mike Byrne. Jane's Addiction. So he had replaced the drummer. Um, he replaced the bassist. And then in 2018, there was the Smashing Pumpkins reunion tour. The lineup consists of James Eha, who I think is an original member, Jimmy Chamberlain, Jeff Schroeder. It was rumored former bassist Darcy Retsky was not a part of the lineup due to unresolved tension between her and Corgan. However, she stated that after offering her a contract, Corgan retracted it, saying we also have to balance the forces at play. There's no room for error, Mm -hmm. which is a dick way of saying I don't want you on my show. And also he's uh, he goes on Alex Jones a lot. So Um, he looks like a goddamn hobo when he does. Oh, sure. I mean, I'm not shocked. I feel like the the. Jim Cornette thing is is more than enough for me not to like the guy. Uh, one pointed out uh, some of what uh, some of the uh, symbolism from the Living Dead movies might have been affected by the other people, which is also a good point when it comes to film specifically because it's very yeah, collaborative. Editors. Yeah, editors and uh, it's very collaborative, and that's why auteur theory is a thing of is the director of utmost importance in a film. And a lot of people argue either way. Um, If you look at the person who proposed auteur theory, it was really mostly him trying to make a case for films as art in general, because similar to how video games are treated right now, a lot of people did not believe that films were art. And a lot of people still don't really, um, or at least they don't view them the way that people do works of art. So yeah, it's, it's definitely something worth looking into auteur theory for um for, for film for billy corgan yeah here's a quote from billy corgan on alex jones talking about uh anderson cooper mm-hmm. already a stew pot of oh fuck at the time corgan called cooper a globalist shill and he still holds that opinion as of today he's a globalist piece of shit which is what i tweeted and i stand by my tweet corgan said adding i think there are forces in this world where people whisper in people's ear and say it's okay to kick him in the nuts because he's not on our team oh my god could that have been more anti-semitic yeah i don't and is anderson cooper even like jewish i have no idea i I mean i'm sure idiots like him believe that pretty much everybody is secretly jewish Anybody oh who God. who is against them, I I why do people keep treating globalism like it's an ideology and not just a natural force that occurs as worlds I mean, become Anderson more connected? Cooper isn't like by any means not a child of um, privilege. His mom is fucking Gloria Vanderbilt. I actually, but I, I, I don't think he's Jewish. We're gonna take a break in a minute so that I can switch to the other game. Um, but one over two makes a point. Uh, I've seen. Multiple videos use Tommy Wiseau as an argument against auteur theory. I would say he's actually a perfect example of auteur theory because yeah, he was, he the room to be 
this. The, his fingerprints are all over every aspect of the room. And he and, wanted that movie to be treated as very serious. Like, well, my, my point, my point has serious. nothing to do with his intent. My right. point is that auteur theory is not about uh, how well an artist was able to create their intent. It's about how much of the director actually affects the film. And in this case, a single person made sure that film was a very specific way. In this case, comple completely incompetent, terrible film. But it is exactly what Tommy Wiseau made it. Only Tommy Wiseau could have made that film the way it was made. So I would say that's a perfect argument for auteur theory, but not in a positive way. Because auteur theory is just the idea that a single person can create the art of their film. And, and he are, did, whether it was good or not. And there are plenty of like badly made web comics that you could point to as like, here's a guy who was in complete control from beginning to end, and how did that turn out? I'd say Auteur Theory, again, similar to Death of the Author, it's like it's just another lens to look at a work through. Mm -hmm. That's why it's theory. It's not meant to be like, this is the only read of this. It's like, no, this is just another way you can read it and another way to see things within it. Similar to how reading a lot of older stuff, um, right now I'm reading Neuromancer, which was William Gibson's... A book from 1984 that is more or less the Hobbit of cyberpunk. And reading it, it becomes very clear, like, where all of the different things for cyberpunk, like, originated in this book. But, like, looking back at it through the lens of all the years since gives it a totally different feel than it would have had back in 1984 prior to the internet and uh, cell phones. Even in William Gibson's foreword from 2004, he talked about how... He didn't even imagine cell phones, despite it being said in the far-flung future. Um, that being said, I'm going to take a break so that I can get some more water and so that I can switch over to the other game. So let's right. do that real quick. We'll be right back.
Okay, just a moment. Uh, let me see what is going on here. There we go. Fixed it. Okay. Hopefully you guys can hear the uh, music and sounds and everything. Controller's working. Yeah, it looks like it should be playing the music. Uh, let me know if it's too loud or anything. In fact, uh, I'm just told visually that's a bit much. Bump that down just a touch. Okay, let me know if there's anything weird with the sound because I unfortunately cannot hear it for this game. So, unfortunate, but let's get going. I can remember what I was up to last time. Let's, uh, yeah. Okay. Up here? Up there. Did I get... I know there's like a, a swingy thing. I'm playing this. And I uh, this. And then I learned. I learned. Yep, I learned that. Okay. So then I gotta go here. You can hear Andrew futzing about on the Facebook call, so. Oh, yeah, I haven't talked to this guy yet. I hope you can all enjoy the, the sounds of Andrew preparing. Yep. Hello. Yeah, we could kind of hear you going going off. <laughs> oh, we heard. All right. Let's see, I have all of this set up. It's Exactly, yeah, this is a Game Boy Advance version of R. Um, this is a, a Game Boy Advance prequel sequel, basically. Like, it was uh, between, it's set between Kazooie and Tui, but it came out after both. Um, yeah. Basically, yeah, but it's also, it's set in the far past before either game, so it's it's very confusing chronologically. I think they intentionally Isn't made it really confusing. Though? Yes, yeah, there's time right, travel. So it's, it's in the past, but... Uh, uh, oh, this is way too detailed to be Game Boy Color. Oh, uh, no, this is uh, Advance. Yeah, one over two thought it was uh, Color. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, you can tell by looking at Banjo's like character model that it's not. Yeah, it's effectively just a pixelated m version of the 3D model from the uh, original games. I guess what they were trying to do was recreate that look that they had successfully done with like Donkey Kong, because this was rare, right? Yeah, yeah, it's still a rare, rare game. Yeah, so they were trying to That's recreate it? how That's they it? had done like oh. that 3D effect. Oh no, I'm gonna drown. I'm definitely gonna drown. Give me the Jinjo. Give me the Jinjo. Uh, for Donkey Kong Country. Right. And everybody, you know, this clearly looks very reminiscent. Oh. Like that's what they were trying to go for. Right. And, uh... Oh, certainly. I mean, that's the thing is like they were definitely going for, um, for pretty much the same look. Good. Like it's 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 got locked off cameras, but honestly, like that's about the only difference between this and one of the N64 ones. It's really 
really solid, and I'm shocked that more people don't know about it and talk about it as far as the Banjo-Kazooie community goes. Says that the Game Boy Color Donkey Kong Country did it okay. Oh yeah, those but were all right. Copying the SNES. Now I'll say this: this looks like they made it for a console first. Like that character model, I could see like the polygons. Oh, they definitely, yeah, they the definitely theme. just took the model okay. from N64 and uh, to force it into this probably rasterized box. it. And it does not. And it doesn't look. Good. I'm not huge on graphics, like, that's not a thing I'm a stickler for, but even I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Well, it's, I mean, it's, I feel like it's pretty impressive for the thing that is. The thing with, um, handhelds, the thing with handhelds is they're always about two console generations behind in terms of, yeah, in terms of, uh, processing power and graphics. But I will say this, the... The 3DS and the DS did really, really impressive graphics if you play, uh, Kingdom Hearts, uh, I just call it Days because I can never remember the fraction. Oh, 3, 5, 8 over 2. Yeah. Uh, that one looked really fucking impressive. Looked really- well, that's the thing is that that, um, that, the DS- that was on original DS, I'm pretty sure, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and that that would be because that was the Wii. That would be about uh, Nintendo 64. But it looked better than 64. It looked closer to PS2. Oh, they definitely they did a lot to um get every ounce of power they could out of that one. Yeah, they, that, whoever uh, worked on that game really just squeezed as much as they could out of it. Um, I would say that, um, for me, it was the most impressive handheld game I've ever played. That's a pretty impressive one. Um, I would say a lot of impressive ones were on the PSP. Like, people really slept on that console, and I don't blame them because it had, like, an infin infinitesimal game library as... As PlayStation and Xbox honestly almost always do. Like, that's my right. biggest complaint with those consoles is just the libraries are so small. And yeah, I have the Vita, and I only really use it to mirror my PlayStation. Yeah, I want a Vita, but it's like if I when I look at it, I'm like, what is does it have that isn't just a port from the console? And it looks amazing, the ports from the console, but like. What I like to use it for is I literally just use it to play my PlayStation on the map. Um, and you can do that, by the way, if, if y'all have a PS4 and you don't know about this, you can get an app for your desktop or laptop that will stream your PS4 to that device. Oh my God. Uh, PS4 Ooh, no, no. remote play. You just Google that and download it from the Sony website and you will get a uh, plug in your controller, your USB port, and you can play it on your desktop or your laptop. Right. Um, uh, one over two points out that middle school, all the kids on the bus use their PSPs to emulate. Oh yeah, it was amazing for emulation. Emulation and ports of like PS1 games. That's how I ended up playing most of Symphony of the Night was through, um, was on PSP. Specifically, there was a game uh, when they re-released uh, Rondo of Blood. Um, if you could actually find Symphony of the Night in the game, and if you did that, it just had a full emulation of Symphony of the Night as a side option, which ended up being the main option because it's just a better, like, game. Um, what kind of phone do you have? I have an iPhone SE. Not the, uh, new ones, but the, uh, the, the ones before that that's about as powerful as an iPhone 6. And I have a big old fuck-off utter Otterbox rigid case, so I can frisbee it across my room if I want to. If you have an Android, there's actually a PS4 remote play app that you can download for your phone. Hmm. You don't need the controller for that, but all the controls are on screen. Uh, I hate the on screen controls. It seem it's an interesting solution to the problem of how do you 
how do you handle emulation, but... Oh, it's so bad. Yeah, but you can, if you've got a game on your PlayStation 4, mm -hmm. you can sign in and play the game on your phone. Hmm. Um, I wish that functionality were a little bit broader. Right. What I would like to see from that is, I put the game in, and I'm at work across town, but yeah. you have to be on the same Wi-Fi. Now, uh, you're supposed to have to do that. Uh, you're supposed to have to be on the same Wi-Fi for doing it through the desktop or laptop as well. Hmm. But I've done, I've left my you know, PlayStation in Savannah when we lived there, and while we were here visiting in Charlotte, I could play it, you know, over the Wi-Fi. Well, I always felt like that was the, I, the point of remote play, is that you could just do it remotely from elsewhere. Well, what I like about it is, I play it on my desktop a lot, which is in another room for my PlayStation, and I don't feel like hauling it in there uh, and hooking it up to the monitor right. every time I want to play in there. But if I'm in bed and I want to play, I don't. So, I play it on my desktop, and when I go to bed, it's connected to the TV in my bedroom. I just play in there. I don't know much, I don't notice much of a difference in quality or input lag or anything. Um, I'm currently playing Judgment, which is a Yakuza spinoff, mm -hmm. and it's really good. Um, but, that's it for this mouse. Uh, yeah, that's you know, what I've been doing. And so, I'm happy with oh, oh, oh. 1 over 2 says they have to stop themselves from doing that because that would break their phone. Oh yeah, if I threw my First phone, I'd phone. be more worried about breaking other stuff. Yeah. It's so, like, hearty. Um, I, my phone is a nice Android. I would, I, unless it is free, I will never pick up an iPhone for myself. Hmm. I don't like. Well, I got it, I got mine on, um, basically just because it was old enough. And I was just, I, I, I was so fed up with Android. Even my best Androids were always just a little too weak, a little too fiddly, a little too... Like, off. I uh, love my androids. Um, I've actually had more luck with an android than I've ever had with an app. I will say, I bought a new desktop and I've been predominantly using that lately. Ah, yeah, if I, if I had a desktop, I would use that all the time. Yeah, um, because you know me, I used my laptop for the entirety of our friendship. Mm-hmm. Same laptop, too. Um, the, uh, it's an Apple laptop, a Mac. Yeah. I will say this, there is one function on the MacBook and, on the, and another function on the iPhone. They're not the same function, but they each have one function that I wish my Android and my desktop had. Right. And that is Command Shift 4 for screenshots instead of print screen. Oh, is that how you're supposed to do it? I just have There's um, two. There's two. There's I have the touch two. bar, so I just I just use the shortcut on that. So there's two. Command Shift Four on a Mac will give you one where you drag and drop. Mm -hmm. So you do like a select of what you want to screenshot. Right. That's what I use the most. Command Shift Five will give you that, but you can it gives you a square that you can then adjust however you want. Before you click, uh, okay. Right, when I, um, when I hit the shortcut on the touch bar, it actually just lets me choose between all of those. Um, so for my Mac, for my desktop, I have multiple screens. So when I print screen and I just want, like, a tweet that's on one of them, I have to get, you know, the multiple screens in the image and then crop. I have to put it in GIMP, then crop, and then select. Or, yeah, crop to selection. Oh, yes. yeah, but that's, as 1 over 2 points out, for uh, Windows, the snipping tool is the way to go for screenshots. I don't know where that is on my computer. Uh, if you just hit, like, um, if you hit the Windows key and just type in snipping tool, it'll it'll bring you to it. Okay. But, like, that's the kind of thing, like, I miss. But on the iPhone, there's one feature, and Maddie has... 
this one, my girlfriend, she didn't even know the phone had this feature, but I did because I've seen it on Twitter a lot. Mm -hmm. But Android does not have this feature. Okay. And it is when you do a screenshot, you can record. Um. So, oh. So like if I were watching your stream right now and you said something super offensive, I could have been recording it and then like uh y'all. So that's why if you watch, look on Twitter, you'll see people sharing videos that end and begin with the iPhone menu screen. Um, oh, yeah, I knew, I knew that you could record the screen. I do that from time to time. I've considered doing, like, Let's Plays audio. with that. But it also does audio. Yeah. And Android can't do that. Uh, I mean, it's you could probably get a third-party app, but yeah, you can't yeah, do it by default. But it's one of the few features that Android didn't have first over an iPhone. That's the thing, yeah. Uh, the one thing I will I will argue with iPhone 4 is it's just nice to be to be able to trust that everything's gonna work because it, it's so closed off, which sucks. But like at the same time, it's like it's closed off in a way that ma means that you don't have to worry about compatibility. I like the Android because it gives me a lot more options for stuff. Um, I can run an emulator if I want to. I can. Yeah. But I am, you know, I will, until an iPhone is as good as an Android, I'll be an Android guy. My um, I'm not saying that iPhones are awful. I just praise, you know, features of my life. I just like the greater freedom of the Android. I'm gonna turn these two fans on and blow all this smoke out the window. This, like I said, as far as y'all need to worry, it's CBD. <laughs> but, um, so if you're the fans, I apologize. Oh, I'll man. I'll try to keep it. Yeah, I'll try to keep it away from the microphone. I, um. It's been a day, I need this. Yeah. <laughs> man, I'm really excited for making, I mean, I say dinner, it's already 10 o'clock here, and it's gonna be a few hours away, but I'm, I'm marinating some stuff for tikka masala. Oh, I love it so much, because there's, like, no Chicken. Indian restaurants in this town. Of Even... course not. You moved to Bum Shark, never home. Yeah, there is one, there is one decent restaurant, uh, Campas, that's, like, a, a family-owned Mexican place that's really good. Um, and there's, like, some decent Japanese food, but... For the most part, it's uh, there's not a lot of great food around here. It's all fast food and stuff. Oh yeah, that's why I haven't done any of the ones yet that um that don't have the headphone jack. That was the big thing with the SE is that it's the shape of the oh, yeah. iPhone four. Yes, as as Gandalf says, <laughs> oh or no, not uh, Gandalf said. A wizard is uh, never late. He arrives when he's uh, he is meant exactly when he's meant to. Um, what I was thinking of, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, where Ford Prefect said, uh, "Time is an illusion. Lunchtime doubly so." Do me a favor. I'm gonna tap on what I think my microphone is. Okay. Let me know if I'm correct. Sure. No, I heard like a brief tiny tap. Alright, what about now? Yes. Much louder? Much louder. Oh, okay, then I'm putting this one away. <laughs> I'm wearing my headphones and it's not picking up the microphone for some reason. It was an internal microphone. So I figured it meant my actual onboard microphone, but right. sometimes it means whatever microphone you have plugged in when it says internal. For yeah. some reason. So that doesn't mm, I don't know what that's about. Yeah, so I wasn't sure if moving the one on my headset out of the way would be a problem or not. Right. Oh man. This is some good <coughs> <CD>. <coughs> Holy shit. Uh, if, for me I wake up if um, 
Or no, this is... 11 to noon most days. So, what I call lunch is really more of a breakfast. Right. Um... Gosh, my sleep schedule has been so messed up lately. I've been getting up like 3 to 6. Yeah. Which makes it even funnier because I've messaged on your channel a dozen times before. It might be because of my VPN. Um, uh, uh, I think it's uh, just uh, 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 Twitch doing that thing. Yeah, but I mean, like, they might have seen it as a, another computer or, or something. I don't I don't know, man. I hardly know how to do any of this streaming stuff. Um, I was going to use my... Uh, actual like separate camera but I found out um the only way to really do that would be with the Elgato through an HDMI cable which is fine because I plan to do some like tabletop stuff and so I will use it for that but um yeah in the meantime I'm having to use just the onboard camera and it's not the best it's a 7 what I was going to say about the Chromecast mm -hmm. is because I'm not using it it's just showing you know nature wallpapers, or like art wallpapers, you know, just stuff to, you know, look nice as a screensaver. Right. While it's not used. And the photo of a seal it just put up is the funniest fucking thing I've seen all day. Hmm. Uh, what? But, oh, speaking of tabletop streaming, we really need to, like, Talk about that game I bought. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I was actually thinking about that the other day. I do want to get stuff set up for it. Um, I, yeah, you're gonna need to send the, the stuff again, yeah, because yeah, I can't, I couldn't find it in the chat, but I definitely want to get up on that. Anytime I played a tabletop game, I've always had to be the, the GM. So, it would be really fun to be a player for once. Should I technically be a promoter? Uh, I don't know. Whatever the book says. I mean, the GM is the... GM is the general one. Um... Watch out. Watch out. Like, I haven't checked out any of the shops in town for, uh, like, just, uh, <laughs> like, equipment, like, grinders, pipes, things like that. Uh, we've seen a few on road trips and stuff. We haven't checked specific ones. Usually, like, truck stops. We have, like, a Loves in town, so that would probably uh, be yeah. the spot to check. Well, no, I'd go to your C If there's a CBD shop in town, I'd go there first. There, I think there's one. Um, Cause that's remember the one in Savannah too. They had all the stuff. Right, right. Whoa. Oh, oh, I'm in it. I'm in a mini game. Did you ever get paid by them? Like, did you do that? Thing? Um. Did you just sit down? Uh, it, and it, well, they they changed it. By the time I did it, they changed it so that you just got like a free item. But then, like, also when I went there, they were just they were just like giving out samples of stuff. So. When I went to buy these cones today, um, apparently I had earned enough credit at my current place that they gave us some free uh, orange gummies. And I was like, hell yeah, I love orange gummies. And then I read the package, and the package described them as sugar-coated orange gummies. Okay. <laughs> so if you're like me, you're imagining like some orange slices, like the right, those like really the the brocks. Yeah, those really good ones that just taste nothing uh, like a real orange. 
orange, but it's so amazing. I, uh, I'll, I'll take your word on that. I'm not really, I'm not a fan of any gummy that isn't actually chewy. So like Swedish was, fish, Sour Patch Kids. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the, the just kind of goo style gummy. I would say they're some shit, but I wouldn't say they're good. But I, anyway, I, but I like those. Cynical fish are good, which is not helpful in my time. It takes forever and makes it last longer. Yeah, sure. Um, God, this is... It's a, it, yeah, for me, it's mainly like getting them in my teeth is the worst part, so I don't... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I open this up, and we're like, I think this is going to be my favorite edible ever, because I'm not huge on edibles at all. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll eat them, but I'm not, they're not my favorite. I mean, you should better. try making your own. I did that one time, and it was pretty, pretty good. I made some brownies in the room. Um, they're better for maintaining a high. I mean, for maintaining the CBD. Oh man, I made, um, when I lived in Washington, in the land of the free and the legal, uh, they, um, I made, like, this orange, like, cream cake that was an edible. It was amazing. It was back when Coco and I were still long distance, and I, like, took it down. Um, I'm, I'm actually making tincture right now. Okay. So it'll be done around the time we come down to bring you all that couch. Hmm, perfect. And so I want to get like some isomalt and make hard candies. Oh. I do. I do enjoy a hard candy. But uh, so oh, speak, before I get sidetracked on these damn gummies, I get them all. <laughs> Maddie and I are kind of just like she likes edibles. Or she prefers edibles. Sure. So we get them all. We open them up and pop them in our mouths. And they were not what we expected. Oh. Now, that's not to say they were bad. They were fun, but they took a very, as many put it, French approach to orange flavor. Oh. Hold on, I'm at the oh my tail end of this. Tree. The perspective on these parts is, is bananas. I don't know what. Oh, God. I think I get what they're trying to communicate with these platforms, but this is like. This is real hard to parse. So, it was a very light citrus flavor, with hints of rosemary, oh. and like, uh, it wasn't a sweet, right. it was a very light flavor, and very savory approach to oranges. Right. Which is not to say a bad approach, just a different approach. Okay. They were good. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh yeah. So it was, they were just like, oh, oh, gross. Sure. I mean, I prefer something that's like less sweet, anyways, as far as candies and stuff goes. Like that's one thing I like about Game Fuel is that while it's the size of an energy drink, it only has about as much sugar as like a standard can of uh, soda. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's still pretty sweet. I have to avoid sugar. Yeah, exactly. I look at sugar like crazy, and you'd be surprised by like cereal. Big time. Mm. Like, soda, uh... Oh my god. The really highest disgusting. sugar content I've seen on anything was a soda. Oh yeah, there's and that Sprite... I, I, when I started paying attention to sugar, it's like the Sprite Limonade has 144% of your daily recommended for sugar. Yeah. You literally uh, cannot finish a bottle without overloading sure. yourself on sugar. My, for a serving of anything, is it should, and don't at all take this as sound medical advice. This is me, and what I think is safe for me. Consult a doctor before you take any kind of dietary advice from a stranger on the uh, Oh, what's uh, happening? I try to keep whatever I eat se uh, under 10 grams of sugar per serving. Uh, so a lot of diet sodas. <laughs> 
lot of things like that. A lot of water. But, uh, when it comes to things like cereal, I would assume things like green nuts and kashi and, you know, special cake, like the adult oriented cereals, would be the healthiest. Right. But they have sometimes twice the amount of sugar. Oh yeah, because and they have to make it, they have to make it palatable. And it's never palatable. Like, that's what makes it so much worse. But like, um, well, that's my thing. Is like, I, I don't do any of the, like, diet stuff, low sugar stuff, because if I'm going to have something sweet, I just want to have the actual thing rather than a, a neutered version of it. So I, um, I'll have the full thing, but then I'm just careful about the quantity that I cons consume. So what I do is, for most things, I make my own. I have found really, I take this advice, try so much sugar substitute. Mm, yeah, told us that. I, I still have not been able to find it, but you I've been on the lookout. On Amazon, and I know fucking, you don't want to go on Amazon, but like, you might oh, no, I use, find it elsewhere. I use Amazon all the time, I just don't, uh... I know, I'm, I'm talking, like, socially, though. It's yeah. not, not the best right now. Well, that's the but, thing, is they've, they've gotten the monopoly on it, so now you kind of have to. Yeah, yeah. It's one thing to say, oh, you shouldn't use it at all. It's, it's fine, we understand, but there's some things we can't get elsewhere. Exactly. That we, we need, yeah. Uh, but, that was so, when I made the the uh, the the turkey leg, the like uh uh uh, uh, uh corn turkey. Yeah, I, that was the only place I could get juniper berries. Yeah. So, but definitely get solo sugar substitute. And for brown sugar, brown sugar is something that is apparently super difficult to replicate oh. in a low glycemic way. Um, mm -hmm. And so, for a long time, it was just, you could maybe use figs. You know, like, eh, yeah. not really. And so what I found is a brand called Swerve. Swerve? Uh, Swerve. S-W-E-R-V-E. And the sugar substitute brand is Sola, S-O-L-A, for anyone watching this. Um, the Swerve Brown Sugar, I bought it, I made a batch of the corn turkey with it. It was amazing. It, I, I made them, so I can't have red meat, because, again, I'm pre-diabetic, I also have high cholesterol. So, I eat a lot of white meat, I eat a lot of no sugar, so... for. I love corned beef though, so what I, and I can't have salt, so I made a salt-free, sugar-free, corned beef with turkey breast that tasted as good as the real thing. Because I used no salt, sugar, salt substitute, and swerve brown sugar, and uh, the only thing you miss out doing it with turkey is that, like, the lip-smacking stickiness the, the mm. fat in the corn beef. Oh, yeah. Because there's not much in the turkey. So you'll miss that. Like, you won't get that, which is a huge part of corned beef. But if it's that or my life, I will take the flavor without the sticky anything. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've done it. I've done it, too, a couple times now, and it, it turned out really good. I wanted to do. Oh, the thing I've wanted to do um, is the Alton Brown uh, smoked turkey. I want to try smoking. I want to get the. I want to put together the smoker that he like made. That cardboard one or the aluminum. The the cardboard. Yeah. It's, it's mainly. Um, it's mainly getting a. Uh, a uh, hot plate and like a crappy aluminum pan so that I don't mess up my or not aluminum a uh, cast iron so that I don't mess up my good one I have three cast iron pans no I have four cast iron pans now and I love all of them I just got a new one cause it was do y'all have Publix down there? we do yeah we have a Publix in town so you know how like 
at the front of Publix, they have a rack of stuff that they're clearing from clearance. It's like either we're getting close to an expiration date or it's, you know, they can't sell it. So. Uh, not. It, ours is in the, the back, but yeah, we have a clearance rack at ours. Yeah, so they had a 20 or $30 cast iron skillet hmm. on that rack for 10 bucks. Oh. I haven't seasoned it yet. It right. definitely needs seasoning. I, yeah, I have the worst luck with seasoning. I always have to go like three or four times before I get something usable. Yeah. I, um... Uh, I'm not... Bragging. I only paid for... One of my skins. And it was... It's not the big one. I paid five dollars and got a cookie bacon kit. That came with a cast iron skillet for the cookie mm. bacon. Yeah, we got one of those too. It's like a, it's itty bitty, and because we have the electric flat range, I'm kind of nervous about using it with the oh, uneven it's hitting. It, it's fine. Um, Preheated in the oven first. Mm. That's a big thing. Um, yeah, yeah, for the oven, I guess that would uh, be not a problem. Yeah, and then you can put it back in. The cheapest one I got was beyond free. Hmm. I I found it when we lived in, in Savannah. You see where the dump is in our neighborhood, right? Uh, yes, I think right so. Right there by the entrance, across from the mailboxes. Oh, okay. So we were taking some shit out of the dumpster and found a skillet that somebody had thrown away that day. Now, it was a really nice skillet. Like, right. it was the grill style, so it had, like, no wines to it, no wines to it. Oh, yeah, we got, um, I got a griddle, and the opposite side has the grill lines. Yeah, yeah, so it's like that. And it was a big square one. It was, you know, 20 or $30 skillet. It was like, it's clearly been here for less than a day. It's not even rusty yet. Yeah. So, I'm going to take this home and clean it, and we're going to keep this one. I'll clean it down to the bare metal and just re-season it several times. Yeah. And, and when, when you season it, I mean, that's going to destroy any germ, bacteria, whatever. Oh, my cleaning method destroyed any germs and bacteria. Oh, what'd you do? Uh, there was some light rust, but not enough, a lot, so I soaked it in vinegar to loosen it up. Sure. Then I brushed it off, and it was still kind of nasty, despite that. So, I have a steel brush drill head, mm. and I have several propane and matte torches. Oh, that's that's so, kind of overkill, I would think. I, I told you, but it was this weird gun kit, and I was like, I am taking it to straight metal. I don't know what that gun kit is. Yeah, and if you're if you're greenish. lucky, it's a bad seasoning gunk, but... So, like, the boss you're fighting here, that color green, mm. it was that, yeah. Uh, well, I would it's think tough. if it's a bad seasoning, the oils could have just gone rancid on it. That's my best guess, but it looked like somebody had used, like, a lot of... Like dyed oil, like if you've ever seen cheap olive oil, it's dyed yeah. green. It looked like a bunch of that. And so I just I wasn't trusting it not to be mold or whatever. Right. So I took it down to bare metal and I brushed it as clean as I could and then torched off what wouldn't come off that way and then brushed that the ashes out. Over and over and over till I was satisfied. Right. My girlfriend would not ever eat out of it if she wasn't convinced it was as clean as could be first. Oh yeah, I mean that method that that just would have destroyed everything on it. Yeah, I when I say I took it to bare metal, I took that shit to bare metal. That's like a molecular cleaning practically. Yeah. It, it might have even played as hot as that, uh, Matt Pro can get. It could have melted the thing. So, yeah. Uh, if I had held it long enough, 
preferably put it in the sound mm -hmm. train first. Mm -hmm. But Bat Pro gets up mm -hmm. to no higher. So. Mm -hmm. And I've got this. So I've got that one. I've got uh, the little tiny one. I think the one I got on clearance was a little bit bigger. Than, or a little bit smaller than the square one. A little bit bigger than the tiny one. Right. So it's about the middle. Yeah, of those two. But it was actually, because it's round, it might just look smaller than the square. They're probably actually about the same size. So I got that. Then, when we lived in Savannah, I had an average size, like the one you think of for, you know, a small family size mm. pan. You know, just that middle, like, six inch, eight inch size. Right. And I left it in Savannah. Oh no, I would have taken that if you hadn't wanted it. Although I'm sure no, you no, wouldn't no. have. I didn't leave it behind. I forgot it. That's what I figured, yeah. There's no way. Yeah, I loved that man. Because it was, I think. No, that one came from Maddie's book. It was a hand me down. Oh yeah, as the all the best one, pans are. It was the first one I had used. And I actually left it with our first small pan that I had purchased. Uh, separately from the company. I'm hoping I didn't forget them and that they're actually in storage. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that I had them after we had finished with storage. And I forgot to pack them when I left. Ooh. Sucks. If it, but, so, my in-laws were like, well, we'll get you a new one. And they're like, it was the round one? I was like, yeah. They ordered me the biggest pan I've ever used. But it's perfect for cooking for four. Hmm. Um, I, especially, I, I've gotten this down to a science. I use chicken thighs for just about everything now because it's plentiful and cheap. Oh, yeah. And it's got, um, like, the most fat content in yes. most of the chicken parts. That's what yeah, I'm using so, to make the tikka masala. Yeah, so what I do is I get our skillet, get it dripping hot while I cut up the meat. Because I usually buy it bone in and then debone it myself. Oh, sure. Because I can get a pack of, like, what, 8 to 12 thighs for $4 mm, at Publix. It's a good price. Uh, I think that, that was about the price we were doing them at. I don't mean for a or for dollars a pound, I mean total. And one of those styrofoam containers, you get for four, uh, $5. Right. So I buy the, buy the fuckload, and what I'll do is I'll get the pan hot, Get out the chicken, skin it, throw just skins in. Oh, and let those crispy. Those Ooh. Let those render out all that fat. And only two. Do more than two, you'll have too much fat. Two skins in. Let, you know, render it out while you're deboning the chicken. And then flip them over while you dice up your chicken for whatever or cut it up however you use. And then take the skins out. If you want to eat them, that's on you. I'm not going to. But dispose of them however you will. And right. then cook your chicken in that. And you'll have plenty of fat for four thighs from just two skins. And you just cook that up in the skillet until it's, you know, browned on each side to your liking. I, you know, I like it just browned, not blackened, so... Mm. And then get some Zatarans Jambalaya mix. Mm. Cut up some Polish sausage. And brown each side of the slices. So in the skillet, you'll have plenty of fat left over for that. Throw that in. Jump alive. Throw it in. Throw on the chicken. Before you add the water, <laughs> have, I think it's something like two and a quarter cups. Put in the two cups. Use that last quarter cup. Now I've discovered this. It's the easiest way to clean a skillet ever. And you get more flavor in your food. Take that last quarter cup of water. Make, and I use chicken broth personally, so the, mm -hmm. instead of water. 
So take that last quarter cup of chicken broth. Keep, make sure the pan is still mm. ripping hot. And dump that in. Swirl it around. You don't have to scrape nothing. Pour it into the jambalaya. Mm. Then put it back on the heat. And with a paper towel, wipe it out. It'll be perfectly clean mm. every single time. Mm. It, it works. And it's amazing. Right. Um, and you get that extra. It's not technically fond, I guess, but it's similar to fond. I, I guess it's similar. But I feel like fond can only grow in a nonstick pan, and people are very particular <laughs> about that kind of thing. So I'm hmm. not going to say it is definitely fond, but it is fondish. I nonstick wouldn't it be the opposite. I don't know. You don't want to use. If you ask somebody like Benjamin with Babish, uh, who was also named Andrew. Yes, Andrew Ray. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shit, I'm choking on the nugget. No. No. <laughs> Andrew, no! You ask him or Al okay. Brown, and they would tell you <laughs> a true font must be made in a skillet that is not non-stick. Right, Because you yes. want the food to stick. So they would eschew a cast iron skillet for that very reason. Mm. Because the season on your skillet should give it a sort of non-stick Yeah, basically. I would go making eggs in mine, but... <laughs> Oh, I mean, you still need to use some amount of fat, but like, yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying like, you know, I I don't believe that fully myself because I get what is essentially a font from uh, my skillet when I do this. Right. And it's just this bit stick to the pan, yeah. You know? Yeah, Even effectively. Not, like it's burnt to the pan because I'm lacking the food. And it's not that it's, you know, should have stuck to the food. It should have fallen off the food. Right. So, and then it's cooking in fat, which is technically seasoning the pan itself. And it gets stuck. So you got to deglaze, and I use broth. Um, and it's fucking amazing. I also cheat uh, when I make the Zatarain's go I, uh, I use arrowroot powder to thicken it. Mm. I have, so I have a little bit of the juice set aside, the you know, broth that cooks in the rice. Uh, I set aside some of that, put about a fork full of arrowroot into it, and stir it through, like, I don't know, a quarter cup again. Right. Just to put that in. At the end, the gumbo is like two minutes from cooking through. You turn off the heat, you know, you dump that in. Your little slurry of very weak ooplet. Yeah. And, and, because that's technically what it is, it's just not got the ooplet properties that you're not adding enough storage. Yeah, exactly. But you dump that into the gumbo, and it will thicken to the. Oh, my father in law was impressed because his mother is from Louisiana. He had tried Zatarans in the past, and it was never as thick as a gumbo because they don't include oh, okra. Oh, yeah. Not, not a fan of okra. Well, but that is the thickening age typically used to make gumbo thick, so if you're used to sweet gumbo, that might be your preference, but if you're used to regular gumbo, it should be a lot thicker. So I thicken it with the arrowroot. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. Hold on. Another wall cut. Hmm. Um, yup. Yup. Oh my god, this is gorgeous. Oh. Turn around. Turn around. I hope you Oh. Not you. Oh, that was the fuck these little creatures are. God damn it. I have one more. I gotta get here, I'm pretty sure. Let me let me check the totals. I gotta be honest with you, I am not following 
like what's going on at all. Like I'm watching. It's all good. But uh, hey, none of it's Basically, I'm just finding all of the. Th okay, so going to the totals. There's gonna be a hundred music notes on every world. There's gonna be ten jiggies. There's gonna be five jinjos, a mumbo token, and some amount of new moves. And then usually two of the empty honeycombs, which expand your maximum health over time. Um, but you making all this shit up? Stop lying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm. I'm... And then you gotta grab it by the, the, the scrotal nuts. Mm -hmm. I gotta, oh gotta find this last cheeky. I have no clue where it's at. Unlike yeah. the first game, which I went through and remembered most of it, I, I have zero idea for a lot of this game, because I only played it once. Yeah, it's, it's weird, um, what you can get away with if you just know a few, like, basic secrets. But you can take box to rice and turn it into, like, an amazing dish. So I just, you know, knowing a few tricks. Yeah. Right. And, because you and I were talking about cleaning skills the other day, and putting yeah. out brown tea, paper towel, and salt method actually works. Yeah, and I tried, the, I literally was like, every now and then I like try that to be like, he says it works, and in the video it works, but every time I cannot get it to work. My best guess is we just don't have the right salt. Right but. salt or like the right pan. I mean, that's the thing with Good Eats Reloaded is pretty much every situation has been some very specific thing. Like the fondue yeah. recipe that just doesn't work. It was literally just the specific cider they had was like a very particular artisanal cider. Although, they did the, the, um, a Chuck for Chuck reloaded, and people apparently really hate that recipe, but I made it, like, a few weeks ago, and I really liked it. I, I'm not big on Chuck in the first place, like, I don't, I don't, like, stink format for when it comes to beef. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm having a steak, that's one thing, but, like, I would rather have my meat, my pork, or my beef specifically ground. Whether it's in meatloaf, burger, taco, you know, whatever, hamburger helper, pasta, spaghetti. Like, I don't like chunks of beef because it gets stuck in my teeth. Fair. And I have a problem where I can't necessarily tell that food is stuck in my teeth. Until the next morning, because my gums will swell under the food. Oh no. And no one else I know has this problem, but, like, and it only is under, like, the gap between those two teeth where it will swell. And start, like, I, my best guess is it's trying to push the food out itself. Probably. But, I mean, generally, if your body is doing something weird, it's trying to correct some, uh, inconsistency within its own biology. Yeah, but if I ever have swelling gums, I'm like, oh, there must be food there, and I'll pick it out, and sure enough, the swelling will go down within, like, an hour. Mmm, yeah. Shit. Anything. And it's always, like, I very rarely have gum swelling without there being food in there. Mm. Yeah. To a point where if I have serious or whatever, I would probably spend about a half hour of flossing before I figured it out. Right. But, yeah. So, I, I typically prefer my beef round to, like, roast form, steak form, like, anything where it's still mostly intact. Right. Uh, steak is different because they tend to cut it on the bias, so... Well, yeah, that exactly. So it's a little better, but even then, I'm, I'm, I'm I have to fix it the bread. Speaking of cutting, like I, I desperately need to get like some new knives. When I was cutting up the tikka masala, it was, it, 
was out of control. Like, my the knife just would not go through at all. Get a sharp. I want to. I really do. They have a really great one. Hmm? Look, I'm tripping on a knife. I have one of these to pack. I'm sure it comes in other colors now, but all the ones I've seen are red. Mm -hmm. With a black suction cup on the bottom. Okay. And a little black arm. But what you do is you just pop it on your countertop, push the arm down, and it sucks it to the table so tight. You know me. You know my strength. Even I struggle to move it huh. without worrying about breaking. Interesting. So, um, and then you just draw the knife across you know, the direction it tells you to draw. Sure. Which, I thought I'd been doing it wrong for a long time until I noticed you're supposed to draw it in a specific direction. Mm. But you just draw it across, you know, three or four times, and you go to cut. It's uh, like a new knife because I'm doing most of the cooking, you know, for me and my girlfriend and her parents right now. Right. And my mother-in-law had used the knife on a stone cutting board. Why do they even make stone or glass? Glass cutting boards baffle me. Why would you ever want one? Because it's flashy. No. So she cut, she cut no. a bunch of vegetables on it. And she is a chopper, not a slicer. Ah, yes. The, so, the... the perfect storm was fucked up that knife. Yeah. And so I had to sharpen it because it was a, well, first of all, it wasn't my knife, but second of all, it was a very expensive knife. Hmm. You know, it was not a cheap knife. I was like, I'm not letting this, you know, I will sharpen myself. So I got out our sharpener and I just, you can see like the shavings peel away. Hmm. It's that effective. Um, that, honestly, my big thing with the sharpener is, like, I don't really trust that any of the knives we have right now is going to hold an edge for very long. Well, that's what makes this one so good. It's, like, the size of half a suit can. Mm. So you can just store it in a drawer, and pop it out, suction it down, and sharpen the knife. Okay. And, yeah. It is super easy. I'll try to find it on Amazon and see it later. Yeah, totally. Um, I... I very badly need to sharpen those knives because they are just useless uh, for most it's things. It's one of those where you see it and it's that little V shape of whetstone of uh, two stones pressed together. Mm -hmm. And you just draw, you see it on like, as seen on TV sometimes where the guy just shuck, shuck, shucks and you're like, no, that's impossible. That couldn't work. It does. It, it really fucking does. Um, so you don't have to like, as long as you hold it, you know, 90 degrees to the tabletop, so that, you know, it's straight up and down. You don't have to do any guesswork, you just pull it across three or four times, and it's sharp. Mm. I mean, it's not, you know, if you had taken it to a professional sharpener, it would have been a different process and you would have gotten a keener edge, but for what you need, if you're not, if you do the yeah. quality of the metal, I just need it to be to cut because it's just not safe at this point. Right. It's so dull. Yeah. And that is absolutely true, people. Knife safety in the kitchen is insanely important. I honestly, like, I've also been slacking when it comes to knife safety of, like, keeping my fingers out of the way. Like, I, well, the thing is, like, I'm not that bad about it. But every now and then I do catch myself, like, not paying attention to that, and I know that that's when you're most likely to have an accident, is when you stop paying attention. So I've been focusing more on getting the, the claw, or like the Gordon Ramsay like, one middle finger out ahead of all the others. So, I am pretty good on life safety in general, but I have one. Uh, I cut myself recently, but 
it wasn't with a knife. And because of this, I now have a very strong opinion of style of tongs. Because you know how some tongs are scissor style, where the axis at which it opens and closes is halfway along the handle and the head. Right. And then there's the kind that are V-shaped, where the axis is at the back end. You clap them together like crab claws. I will be a proponent for the rest of my life of the scissor style. Because... I was trying to grab something with the other style, the B shape. Right. And they slipped as I squeezed. And mm. where the two things overlap, mm. snipped into the tip of my finger and gouged out a chunk. That was, two, in actuality, two separate chunks that met almost in the middle, but were separated by just a little bit of skin. Ooh. No, 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 no. Yeah, and I had to, like, I was still mm -hmm. cooking, like, I had to just grab some paper towel and wrap it up and hold it close to my chest while I could with my left hand. No. What is this man's crime? Release him! I will support uh, scissors style tolerance for the rest of my life. Hmm. Yeah, makes sense. That's how you know you cook a lot when you have a fucking opinion on the style of tolerance. Oh, yeah. That's what this channel's gonna become. Oh, I'm actually low on notes for this. Impressive. Kitchen Anarchy. Hey, well, fuck your tongs. My tongs won't mm -hmm. hurt nobody. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been trying lately not to use anarchy to be just synonymous with chaos, because it's kind of the opposite when you yeah, look no. into it. Well, I mean, if you look at the protests, they're like, it's absolutely the opposite. Oh yeah, we our dishwasher doesn't work, so everything's hand but, hand washed anyways. Hand washing a wooden cutting board is a pain in the ass. Oh yeah. You can't cut you can't cut with raw meat on it. Nope. Which they're always the biggest cutting boards. Yeah. They're only useful for cutting the littlest things. Because it is a bacteria sponge, no matter how well you hand wash that, you're not getting that bacteria out. Yeah, it's pretty much only good for like Doughs and uh, vegetables. Yeah, fruits, vegetables, nuts, um, oats, if you're cutting them up for some reason. Mm. Uh, they're good for working with dough. Uh, that's a good that's thing they're good for. But outside of that, they're fucking useless. So well, I yeah, I always use them for rolling out dough because we have like really garbage countertops that don't grab the dough at all. That is the only good use for a big, large wooden cutting board. Yeah. Um, cutting up, you know, chocolate is better on one. But I will. Everything you can do on a flat wall wood cutting board, with the exception of the dough rolling, you can do on a plastic cutting board. And you can throw it in a fucking dishwasher. You can just. You can leave it to soak overnight. Yeah, exactly. On it. You can do whatever you want with it. It's I I bet if you floured it enough, you can roll the dough out on it. 
I'm in the unfortunate spot where, like, all of the pieces that I cut up are, uh, don't fit the cutting board I have anymore. Right. So but, now I have a bunch of weird, odd pieces. Here's the thing. They can be repurposed still in your kitchen. For my favorite life hack. This is a legit life hack. Test it in person. That's what my girlfriend uses. That's what her sister uh, uses now. I think we showed it to her. Um, right. I think I know take, what you're talking about, but... Take a shelf wipe. And preferably two. One you can get in both hands. And fit around the jar. Grab the bottom of the jar with one. Grab the lid of the jar with the other. And you can fill that jar with ease. Time. Yep. My and grandma has she has arthritis and ends up needing to do that. It's that checkerboard foam pattern kind. Yeah. Uh, you can use that, you can use that to as a non-scented or skin surface. If you don't have any of that, you can use a tea towel, but I don't know if I trust that. Like a, well, like a damp tea towel can work. I, I usually use it more for uh, bowls. Because, like, you have to, like, wrap it around. It's great for that, but, yeah, I, I really just use the shelf liner most times, otherwise. Exactly, get a big roll of it at Dollar Tree. Some other kitchen hacks. If you don't live in a place where you can grill, or as apparently Northerners call it barbecue, you're yeah. wrong, you're grilling. If listen, you're not, listen. If you're making hot dogs and hamburgers over charcoal in a wooden bowl, that's grilling. It's not barbecue. And okay. I will. Barbecuing is the act of cooking meat over slow heat for a long period of time, usually by smoking. Yeah. Does not mean that it has to be by smoking. Does not mean that it has to be done over coals. You can. You can make barbecue in a crock pot. It may not make purists happy, but it is still barbecue. Yeah. Well, oh, it doesn't have to be a dry cook to be considered barbecue. It's still dry cooked. The only juice is involved would be its own. Uh, mm, okay. You just put it in the crock pot, let it go, and then what I do is I, when I was able to have it, I would put a pork loin in and just let it, you know, get to the point where you can tear it your fingers, mm. break it up, Get it as straight as you can. Uh, and then if you're a freak, you would add a red sauce like you know craft barbecue sauce or Heinz or whatever. Um it's a tomato base. Mm -hmm. Which is wrong, but that's your call. You would also mix that in at this point so that it can get warm with the barbecue. If right. you want to add a char to it. Before you add the sauce, you can take a heat gun, and I do not mean a blow dryer, I mean a heat gun. Oh. Set on a high setting and chart, or you can get a small propane tank and chart with that. Then, you can add the barbecue <laughs> sauce, put it back in the crock pot to let the barbecue, the barbecue get warm, and you're done. Now, what? I did is the correct thing, and I would char the meat, put it back in the crock pot, and then let it get warm again before 
taking a bun, adding a proper vinegar uh -huh. sauce to the bun, uh -huh. then taking the meat out, and applying uh -huh. a copious amount of vinegar sauce to the meat, and then putting that on my burger after I've applied my bun, and eating it that way, because that's the correct way to eat barbecue pork. That is the Eastern Carolina way, and now I do it with jackfruit. I, the, I, the jackfruit comes out good. I will not say that it is like bad. It's good. I just I don't buy it as like a replacement for pulled pork. Like the texture's right, but the flavor is just the jackfruit isn't neutral enough. Yeah, and it's good. I, I like it, but it's just I don't I don't really th think of it like a pulled pork. Not much, just a little bit. Mm. Right. So that the sauce has more surface area to cover. And the jackfruits get covered up. Where there's more surface area for the sauce to and cover up. Right, right. Flavor. So you'll get a more saucy flavor. Now, if you want to... It's huge. If you really want to spice it up, Add some liquid smoke to the jackfruit while it's cooking. Oh yeah, liquid smoke. I it, that was another one that was really tricky to find around here, but I eventually, I eventually got a bottle. I needed it for um, there's the the Chick Fil A, what what you call it uh, clone sandwich. No, not the even the sandwich. Um, the the. B barbecue. They have like a honey roasted barbecue or something sauce. Uh, it, it has that in it, mostly. Um, and like, I... Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, like, I knew, I knew they couldn't hold on to the good faith that they had gotten from finally stopping, uh, stop... When they quit supporting, like, anti-LGBT organizations. They may not have been outwardly doing it like they had, but I, I don't buy the thing that's the thing yeah it's like i'm not gonna ignore the fact they still did that for decades like they don't get a pass just because they finally decided to stop it but now it's like even that like they've lost they've lost that because they're actively supporting the the cops and protests and that's that's what i hear but it i don't hear them being as vocal about it Yeah, that were then fake, right? Somewhere. I might have talked about that on stream at some point. I do not recall. They may not be as not worried about it, like, as far as financing goes, because, but that's because they're spending all their money on stolen uh, artifacts. Exactly. Uh, they are horrible. And they're also the people behind the corporations. It was them trying not to pay for... It was either trying not to pay for birth control, or trying to prevent gay marriage, one or the other. I think they had hand in both. Mm -hmm. But they, it was because of them trying to get out of whatever they were doing, by arguing that corporations are people. Yep. And, that, and that's... Uh, where that whole thing started. And you think Hobby Lobby for that. Thanks, you idiots. So I shop at Michael's instead. Uh, well, Michael's is also apparently super, super Christian, donates to all sorts of garbage. Yeah, I heard that one from family, so... The only places to really get craps are Joanne's. At this point. Oh no, named after a woman. Probably not good. Am I right, other incels? Listen. Holy cow. Did you hear? <laughs> I saw uh, in the news there was a guy who was like full incel, gonna like. Basically, he uh, was admitted to the hospital with his hand completely blown off. 
and he tried to explain that it's like, no, it was, I was mowing the lawn, and it like flipped over and drug my hand in, like a bomb. And they were like, yeah, we're gonna go check your house. And when they did, like, yeah, he was clearly trying to make a bomb. And there were just chunks of his hand sprayed against the wall. And they found a, a bunch of different, like, manifestos, how he was wanting to be the next Elliot Rogers. All sorts of incel crap, and he was gonna, like, blow up, like, a cheerleading event in the mall. So, I'm glad he got caught. Because that was... I, I'm glad he got caught, and I'm glad that he only blew his own dumbass self up. Well, I mean, that's the What's most we can hope for, is that it, they just end up being idiots and hurting themselves before they hurt anyone else. What's distressing to me is how, uh, I have the basic skills and knowledge to improvise a lot of weapons. Uh, in fact, Cory and I tested one together. I, mean, I think it's like some of the stuff I've written about making. Yeah, and some of the stuff yeah, like that they've published themselves showing you how to make. Right. You know, on their YouTube channel. Like, it's kind of, like, I could be a suspect on a lot of things. Well, the thing so, is, when you break it down, it is just, it's just chemistry. And it's and like... It's not even like difficult chemistry, it's pretty... It's pretty straightforward how to build, like, a taser from a camera, a disposable camera, to yeah. become a taser, right? And it's really, really easy. It takes two minutes, if that, to pull off. Um, it has to be a disposable camera. It has to be a disposable camera with a flash. Mm, yeah. And that's it. That's all you need. That, two screws, and a little piece of wire. Uh, two little pieces of wire, but, like, just little pieces of wire. That's all you need to make a taser from a disposable camera. And it's so fucking simple, and... Once you know how to do that, there's a lot of stuff you can make uh, that aren't weapons, but could be. Like, right. Once you get that good, you you immediately like, oh, I can apply this to this and have this. And it's so fucking simple. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's all just it's the same connected knowledge. Yeah. So, uh, once you know that, you're like, well. That's how you make that then all of all of whatever this weapon is, it's just this. And you know, you can start just piecing together like, oh these things are super easy to make, huh? Yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing. It's it's this it's the same philosophy of like, uh, what is it? Um, it's easier to destroy something than it is to make something. So similarly, it's like it's easier to make something that can hurt than something that won't hurt. Yeah. Well, I, well even then, like I could, with the same knowledge of how to make a taser. Mm -hmm. Device that would work like a grenade. I throw it, and it just lets off an extremely bright light. Right? Like a blindingly bright light. I know how to make that right now, and I've never built one in my life because I know, well, this is how a circuit works. Well, that's even just, you can just do that with a camera. Like, that was one thing when I got my camera that I didn't know about, which is that, like, you're not even supposed to be within three meters of someone when you use the flash, because it can do permanent, like, retinal damage. They're really kind of dangerous. Yeah. And, uh, as a kid, I used to, like, find it funny to stare into it, like, up close, taking, like, selfies of my chin, for instance. Yeah. Because 
because I like to look, you know, inside, and, and it's just a little halogen bulb that's going off extremely brightly, brightly in your eye. And so, I mean, if you know how to make, if you figure out how to make a taser from camera, you can figure out the steps you need to make a flash, we'll call it grenade, but that's not a light grenade, I guess. You, right. And, it's the same devices, like, in general. Uh, we figured that out, we need to figure out, alright, well, if I do that, but replace this part with this part, oh, well, okay, now I have a far more dangerous part. And you just keep going from there, you realize it's super easy to make weapons. Yeah. And... Right, that's why I remember this part being hard. Fucking run at eight so fast. There we go. If, I'm sure that I would one day be a suspect of something I'm going or something. I mean, come on. I, I know exactly how to. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's. You've already just, in the last few minutes, given. Probable cause. Yeah. And, like, yeah, it's just super easy stuff. Like, it's not even like, oh wow, this is crazy. How could I? That was something I liked in um The Martian. I don't know if you ever read that. Um, I think you, I think you'd like it a lot because it is hard sci-fi. It's basically. Um, the way someone described it, that is exactly what made me want to read it. And, um, to a lesser extent, watch it. The movie's okay, but I feel like the book did what it wanted to do a lot better. Um, it's the scene in Apollo 13 where they just pull out all the stuff that's on the space shuttle. And they're like, okay, these are the things we have to get them out of there. That scene has always... I've always been like, oh, man, I want to try and make that puzzle. But it's basically that for a whole book. Of just like a guy trapped on Mars with no support, no communication, trying to get off of Mars. Oh, oh, that's where I know from the movie. Yeah. Oh my god, what city is this? Hmm? I'm sorry, I'm. <sighs> this is the wallpaper. It's a gorgeous, like. I don't know what you call it. Um, like Petra carved into the cliffs. Hmm. But it's a whole fucking, like. City. Oh. Some of these I think have to be photoshopped. That's a photo. Oh. And I'm probably looking like a dumbass. So it's not really a cliff sighting. Oh, I don't think it's a cliff sighting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks very cliffy. Um. I'm gonna send you all these pictures. Oh. So I can, uh, if we take another break tonight, you can put up all these pictures I'm raving about. Yeah, I might call it a night in just a little bit, but um, uh, The Martian. It's effectively just like 300 pages of a guy trying to figure out how to survive on the moon with just general engineering knowledge. On Mars. On Mars, sorry, yeah. Um, but it's like there there's a point where they need to make there's a point where they need to make a bomb and it's like a chemist is just like making a bomb is incredibly easy because it's basically the thing you're trying not to do anytime you're doing other chemistry. And yeah. he literally just makes a, a pressurized container full of just, like, plain white sugar yeah. and just ignites it. And that's all it takes. Pressure is an easy way. Pressure and like, fuel. So, if you can make a taser, you can easily make a bomb. Just replace the, uh, you place the two nodes closer together so that they spark between them and just make sure there's gunpowder between the sparks. Like, that's all it takes to make a bomb. You want to put it in a pressurized container, but that's... I'm not going to go into any better detail than that. But, like, that's the trigger mechanism. That's all it takes. And it's so fucking easy. God, I've got, like, <laughs> nothing in this world. Uh. It's... It's bizarre how easy it all is. Must be like a whole area I haven't gone to yet. Maybe. But, um, yeah. And I've written articles on how to make like electric play-doh. And mm. 
know, kid-friendly articles, but, like, I've also written one where, uh, it taught you that you can make pretty much anything from milk jugs. Yeah. And I do mean, like, anything. You can make a hammer. You can make, uh... I have a plate that's basically a cutting board that just wants finishing. I'm just on it over here of HTP, which is what Milk Jugs are made of. Um, that's, you know, a quarter inch thick now. Because all you have to do is heat it up in an oven. Then you can easily Google the melting point of HTP. It's easily achievable in a standard oven. Right. Melts it on a silicone baking sheet on a pan. And it'll peel right off the silicone when it's done. And you can just melt it down into a blob. I built a hydraulic press so I can press it into uh, blocks that are thinner mm -hmm. and easier to cut and work with. But you can press it into a very rudimentary mold. It don't take a lot of detail. But if you're trying to make like a hammerhead, you can press it into a clock style hammerhead. Um, so you can do things like that and get, you know, a hammerhead. You can get, you can carve it into a new knife handle. You can, uh, if you work with it within sheets instead of blobs, you can make flowers out of it. You can mold each petal. Uh, you can shape it fairly well and carve it with your own fairly well. So you can make uh, faux ivory figurines, you know? You can mix colors, and so it's incredibly easy to make uh, slingshots with it. You know, a weapon. It's incredibly easy to make a ship with it. It won't hold an edge, but it won't take a point. Uh, it's really easy to make anything with milk junk. Uh, if you've got the time and patience. I want to get like a CNC for it. So that I can see if I could oh, you know, yeah. carve custom stuff. Because like imagine a custom brick Game Boy case. Ooh. That'd that's be cool. not a perfect right or you know, just about anything you can think of. Um that makes me think of uh, this one podcast I listened to, Geek Nights, they were talking about ivory poaching and how right. they'd, like, stop it. Um, and one of them posited, it's like, well, what we need is, like, a cheaper alternative to ivory. And the other one said, we have it. It's called plastic. Yeah. You can replicate uh, ivory. You can replicate a pearl look. Uh, you can replicate a lot of looks, honestly. Yeah, that's the so thing. is like, ivory was a big thing prior to when we figured out how to make plastic, but now that we do, it's like, the fact that ivory's still being poached well, is absurd. Technically, we've had plastic for longer than we think we had plastic, because we had, um, the kind of plastic made from milk. You can make plastic out of milk. Now, it's not a uh, easy process, right. and you gotta practice, but... I have made it myself, um, there's a word for it, I can't remember the name. A cassinate. No, no. Huh? I mean, that's what you're separating, the cassian, but... The actual a, process, you mean? It. No, the name of the plastic. Plastic... Uh, oh, come on. Because it's what they used to make buttons and things like that out of. Um, I mean, it's case in plastic. So I think uh, that's what I'm thinking of. Case But um, you can make that from milk and vinegar. Yep. Once you have, you what you'll have is a very if you do it properly, which I did not many times, you'll get something that you could, you know, sand, you could uh carve. It wouldn't be like what you think of as plastic, it won't be glossy at all. But you can shape it, you can make it into blocks or whatever. And 
it's usable for, you know, you can carve a bug into it, whatever. Speaking of I... intentionally curdling milk, have you actually, like, I've been considering it, but have you tr tried out Alton Brown's uh, milk punch recipe? No. No? Nah. It's an alcoholic drink, right? It's, yeah, the whole, I, it's like low ABV drinks. Oh. Yeah, I don't drink it. Right. I will have a tipple of Everclear mm -hmm. every now and then. Because I have found that I do not get the adverse effects of alcohol that I typically do not like if I have been drinking Everclear specifically. Hmm. And only have like a half a finger's worth. Yeah, but that's that's something he talked about as well as drams, where you just yeah. tiny tiny bit'll do ya. Yeah, but uh, what I did was I would have just mm -hmm. a half a finger shot, and then that was it. <laughs> that's all I would do. Crap, I found crap, that, crap. I found that was decent. For, you know, for yeah. That's that's how cocoa is too. I I enjoy alcohol. Um but You really enjoyed it the first time. You met well, uh, actually I'd say that was the time I didn't enjoy it very much. We nearly killed you. I I was really scared like that entire night that I was going to die cuz I had I I had never been, nor have I been since, that drunk. <laughs> That's the thing, I have a really high tolerance for alcohol, like, I- that is one of two times I've been hungover before. The other time was when I went drinking with my dad, and, um, the local bar he goes to, uh, because he is friends with all of them, and he's, like, really popular there, uh, they will give him really strong drinks for the same price as just, like, the standard drink. And so, I was not prepared for that, and I had the same kind of drinks I usually would. And, uh, whoo! Yeah, that, that got me. When I was a drinker, my drink of choice, despite the fact that some will call me a weirdo for this, or say, that's a breakfast or brunch drink. Oh, you're gonna say Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Yeah. Coco had one I once, because Co she's really into, um... She's really into tomato juice, but she was not so much into the Tabasco part of it. I don't like sweet alcohol drinks. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, they're always too sweet, no matter what. Even if you make them yourself, the recipe is just too fucking sweet. Because they're yeah. trying to cover up the fact that they're not adding anything that you want to taste to the drink. Mm. So you're just like, oh. I mean, disgusting. that's what people say, but, like, I, I enjoy a drink where you can actually... I remember, like, a couple... Uh, or more than a, a few Thanksgivings ago, like, my brother uh, was there, and I just had, like, a sparkling cider with, like, a shot of, I don't know, rum or something on it. And I put the rum on top, and my brother, who was who is a... Uh, or, well, I guess he was a frat boy now since he's graduated, but, like, is a frat boy was like, you're gonna taste the alcohol, I'm like, yeah, I want to. Why else would I put it in there? <laughs> For me, uh, alcohol is gross. I don't like anything but white vodka or, uh, Everclear. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. I like a Bloody Mary because it, you know, it's ingredients I like to begin with. I love tomato juice. I prefer to use uh, V8. Mm, I hear that pretty often, yeah. Um, I'll use V8. I'll use Worcester, or Worcester sauce. Hmm? Worcestershire? Is the pronunciation? Worcester. It, it, Worcestershire. No, Worcester. Mm. There is no Worcestershire, England. It's Worcester. Well, is it, is it spelled the same way for England? Yes. Because yeah. I know Gloucester, which is the same thing with a GL at the front, does not have the sure at the end of it. Right. It's a, a, a place in England that's mm. pronounced Gloucester. Goddamn shibboleths. Can't, can't, so, can't keep up with it. That whole Worcestershire sauce thing, not technically accurate, it's 
Worcester. Fine. I'll, I'll accept Worcester, but I've always been annoyed that people act like it's that difficult to pronounce when even with the, the other pronunciation is just Worcestershire. There's three syllables, guys. Well, it's Worcestershire. <sighs> like, it, if you read it out, it's Worcestershire. Yeah. Oh my god, where's the fucking end of this oh, maze? Sorry. <laughs> it would be yeah, it, or it would be Woo Woo Chestershire. Because it's hold on, hold on. Uh Okay, I'm challenging myself right here, I'm gonna spell it. Oh no 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 no, let me let me try and spell it without you saying it. Let me see if I can get this. So you already gave me W O R C H E S T E R S H I R E. Yes? No. Damn! No. It's W O R C E S T E R. Oh, there's no H there. No, but it's Shit. pronounced. It would be pronounced. Right. But that's the thing. It's not Worcestershire. It's not Worcestershire. It's Worcester. How the fuck did we get up onto this stuff? Like, I made all these bridges, I feel like that implies that I'm supposed to get up on top of this, but I don't know where. Am I missing something? Uh, Worcester <clears throat> is a non-metropolitan administrative ceremonial and historic county situated in the West Midlands region of England. The cathedral, of city, or the cathedral city of Worcester is the largest settlement and county town. Uh, the major towns include Bornsgrove, Droitwich, Evesham, Kidderminster, Malvern, Redditch, and the Storefront on Severn. There's no way you got all of those right. The historic county also contained Dudley, Stourbridge, Hillsowen, Oldbury, Yardley, mm -hmm. Kings Norton, and Northfield. But the rest of Worcester is mm -hmm. largely, or Wist, I'm sorry, whilst the rest of Worcester is largely rural. Whilst Worcester? Mm -hmm. uh, the current... There it is, the milk! I gotta get up on top of the fucking milk. Ah. So yes, technically it's Worcester sauce. That was, that was a bad visual clue there, man. That was that was really hard to tell that that's where I was supposed to go. Bad move, rareware. Uh, I will use V8. A couple splashes of Worcester sauce. Tabasco is a choice. You can skip the Tabasco. I prefer to include it. But then I will also add fresh ground black pepper. Ooh. And... I do not garnish with celery. Yeah, I hate celery. I garnish with olives. I'm I'm almost ne ooh, olives would be good. Maybe like a little bit of olive juice, like a dirty Bloody Mary. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely add olive juice, but then you have a savory, tasty uh, drink, and the olives actually go well with that, you know, acidic uh, tomato that. Cracked pepper that you know, it mm. goes well with those and serves as a better pairing. If you want to get weird and TGI Fridays with it, you can also garnish with bacon. Mm. Yeah, that's too but, much. Yeah, I think. I'd rather just slip a little bit of salt in there. Uh, the V8 has enough salt, I assure you. It, that's my thing, is I, I really love tomatoes, but I, I don't really like tomato juice very much. That's why I like the V8. It's not a tomato juice. It's um, more like a vegetable shape. I Have you ever had V8? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, it's, uh, it's just I'm a okay with it. Like a, uh, what's the thing? Like a jamba juice? It's just a pure vegetable jamba juice. <laughs> I mean, it's. I don't have, like, a problem with it. I just. Generally, it's the last drink I would think to get for myself. It's, it's decent. Uh, I grew up with it because it's what my grandmother would drink a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why to this day I also love Diet Coke. But, that's... Uh, oof. I, for, the, V8, for a similar reason, really don't like Diet Coke. Uh, but V8 has a lot of 
salty. Mm -hmm. So that's why I only have it when I'm drinking. Because I don't drink that often. I um, Diet Coke for me, my my mom when I was in high school and probably still now would basically just have Diet Coke. Like just uh, Diet Coke. Did Coke. Just a so day. She would basically do like just uh, like cases of Diet Coke and maybe have a steak. And that was like her entire diet. So if we had anything like uh, she she did not keep much food in the house in general. It was unfortunate. Uh, um, but yeah, that's one. V8 is very strong in salt, so if you make your bloody berry with that, you'll be more than fine. That's the thing. The bacon it would add like a little bit of fat and like some uh some salt, but like yeah, it seems like that's a little overkill. Bacon makes everything better. I have seen it crumbled on top, but... I just... Every... Uh, I, I don't see what people say in bacon. Like, I honestly... Even with, like, breakfast stuff, I would prefer, like, a sausage patty. Yeah. Yeah. And I... Oh, I need to send you my sausages. Or sausage links? Yeah. That's the good stuff. I like to make the patty by hand. Like a hamburger patty. Oh, 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 yeah. And then fry it. Then I make biscuits, uh, my grandmother and mom's recipe. And, uh, when I was um, when I was like a kid, and I was at my grandma's place because she's in extremely vegan, she would have this like this like roll of like uh vegetarian sausage. Right. Um. Was it some like light life? Sausage? I think it was a light life, and then it would be like that. With a little bit of like veginaes on like a dinner roll. Oh, that shit was amazing. I I don't hate the light life. I li um, yeah, light life's actually one of the better ones. Um, yeah, in general, man, I I've, I've been doing that stuff since I was a kid, so like I I'm not really picky about vegetable alternatives. The main thing is that like they're just they're just like a friggin' chunk of gluten most times, so it's like it can be a little much. Yeah. Um, I think Beyond Meat has the best sausages. Beyond Meat's pretty good. Have you had their bratwurst? Uh, not their bratwurst. The like, the the tofurkey bratwurst, or the the, the tofurkey kielbasa is usually my go-to. Because if you're if you're only experienced with Beyond Meat, is like their pre-ground crumbles or their hamburgers. You're not getting their best work. Hmm. Like, it's okay. not even close. Like, this Impossible Burger, first of all, stomps the shit out of Beyond Burger. Oh, yeah, the Beyond Burger is just like a slightly juicier Boca Burger, in my experience. Oh, yeah. Uh, but their bratwurst and their hot Italian Ooh. sausage wings Ooh. are fucking amazing. Or as I put out on Twitter, and what I'm gonna let my friend just think was the original joke. I just wanted to say that they were exceptionally good. And so I said, their burgers aren't much, but their sausages are absolute bangers. <laughs> and that was, like, not an intentional joke, but god damn it, I'm gonna have... You may as well accept it, it still came out of your brain. Yeah, uh, my friend Jess, who might know her work, she works for that. Oh, uh, Jess what? Uh, oh yeah, that's oh, that sounds familiar. I can't think of anything off my top of off the top of my head from her, but right. that's um but, yeah. Yeah. So we were talking and fucking god, how am I supposed to like, No! Aw, oh, damn it. She saw the tweet and was like, I see what you did there. I'm like, Yeah, what I intentionally did there. That's what I meant to do. Yeah. Oh, that was cold. Listen, writing is just documenting what comes out of your brain, and sometimes your brain knows what you're doing better than you do. I've, re I've done jokes that I thought were fucking amazing. And here's the thing, a talent I've had since I was a kid, ever since, like, late 98 or so, uh, I've had this talent where 
I could make parody songs out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's not real. Honestly, like, they're not always good, but, like, if I have the melody set up, like, I can just pop, I can freestyle lyrics that are at least considered somewhat comedic, if just through absurdism. Like, I've sent you a few of the ones I've been doing lately. Mm -hmm. um, I think my favorite one is my first one. First one I ever did, I was, it was back when Burger King was really digging into, like, taking old famous songs and then redoing them as Burger King ads. I, I think I only remember the, the Hootie and the Blowfish one. Wait, maybe that was Jack in the Box. I don't think I know Hootie. I don't remember them that well, but it was that period of time where... Uh, so I was like, I bet I got one. And I just sat down and I was like, what's a cool song that everybody likes right now? And it was high to Space Jam, so I was like, I believe I can fly. So then mm. I said, all right, what can I do with that? And that's all I had to go on. And did I, have I sent you that one? You have, yeah. Like, should I, should I do it? Oh, do it. You may, at this point, you've hyped it up so much, you gotta. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for, I, I, here's the thing, when I came up, when I come up with these, I don't have to think of them out, I just have the lyrics come natural. So, the first time that ever happened, I was in the backseat of my mom's car, going, I believe I will fall. Whopper Jr. and an apple pie. Onion rings and a chocolate shake. Oh, oh, oh. Fuck. And oh. I want it all Motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry. This fucking <laughs> is so hard to do. <laughs> That's my every moment from the end. But yeah, I have been able to do that since I was a fucking kid. Well, and so, yesterday I was getting a protein bar, which, by the way, uh, Diet Conscious Club, Power Crunch Protein Bars, especially the triple chocolate or the red velvet cake. It doesn't taste like red velvet cake, but it's still fucking delicious. The one I always liked was, um, a uh, new, 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 new bars, which are, like, gluten-free, uh, like, all, the whole nine yards. Nice. So that with just a layer of frosting. Uh -huh. They're fucking amazing. Um, I have one for breakfast every day. In terms of the the parody stuff, like I because my memory is so awful and I can't remember lyrics to most songs to save my life. Uh, right. And I if I'm singing them, I'm pretty much gonna do a Monte Green no matter what. Um, so. <laughs> I've gotten better at, like, actually making them cohesive, but generally I just come up with the most absurdist lyrics that fit the meter. Um, and it's pretty much if I want to sing any song, because it's either that or just, like, scatting along with just random syllables, but... See, I have to have a there has to be a spark of inspiration somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, like, I had my power bar. Power crunch bar. And I was looking at it. It's a protein bar. Just a protein bar. Right. But what came to mind was... This... I was, uh... Under the influence of... Wait a minute. Can I, like... Can I... Shit. I, like I was... I was, uh... Under the influence of time. And I just sat there going... This bar is... And my brain went, uh, like, and took that and started doing tab words poem. Mm -hmm. And so, it came to this bar, it is a bar of egg slacks, it helps me to shit. And like, I sent you the longer version of that, I'm not going to torture the house with that. <laughs> like, I came up with that 30 seconds before I sent it to you. Like, the length of the video was pretty close to me. Like, I had the first line, and I just made it all up. So, yeah, I've just been able to do, like, that quality. Yeah. My brain 
seem a lot faster than that. At that than anything else. To a point where I've not even realized, like, I've ridden myself, I never brought myself into a hole, uh, behind or in the class. Well, the, the thing I noticed, too, a lot of people think they can do parodies and stuff because it's like half the work is already done for you. You have a melody and a rhythm and everything. But a lot of a lot of parodies I hear are just wrong. Far too often I see people trying to write them and not understanding that meter is a thing. And that's a problem I have with a lot of modern poetry as well, is that far too often people just want to do free poetry because they think that it's that it's easier because they don't have to focus on meter at all and it's like that's just such a cop out like half of the letter. half of the like the like the art of poetry is in like fitting a meter and lyricism yeah, it's such a like if you ask them why they would give you like a half assed answer without like getting the reason that kind of poetry existed was to be a like counterculture answer to the established norms that had predated. Yeah, it's very like postmodern, but like so many people do it out of laziness rather than like an actual stylistic choice. Yeah, if you're going to use it, you should be making a statement in your use of it. Just using it for the sake of using it because it's easier than you know using a different format or structure isn't <laughs> It's the writing equivalent of people who refuse to learn anatomy because they it's just their style to have very uh exaggerated anatomy. And it's like that's I guess fair, but at the same time it's like as an artist, do you not like want to challenge yourself to make something more interesting to like be able to do anything with your art? I feel to like me, it's the equivalent of someone saying uh, uh, it's the equivalent of like when you see somebody wearing a band shirt for a man they never you know they've never listened to. Mm -hmm. And you're just like <sighs> that's it's not equivalent to me. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the thing is, like, to, I don't, I'm not going to say anybody's art is invalid or anything, but it's like, I just, I, I feel like it does a disservice to the art, or at least it, it's like, it's, it's hampering yourself as an artist if you don't want to, like, challenge yourself and try and make something more interesting or at least more complex. But at the same time, I know from my own laziness that I also will fall into that with, like, music. Where it's like, well, I know how to make, like, a beat and use the pentatonic scale and then just toss it together. It's, it's a music. Yeah. For me, it's a question of, like, what is your opinion on bands that use a punk rock sound but not have any kind of a message, like... Good Charlotte, for instance. Some of their uh, songs had a message like a lot of... Ah, fuck! Not so much, right? Yeah. So, well, I, I would consider Good Charlotte, like, edging more into, like, emo rock. At the time, though, there was no real name for it. Hmm. Like, at the time, uh, the closest she had to that yet was them. And it was, you know, or, so like an Avril Lavigne. Sure. Used a punk sound, but no message. Yeah, uh, I mean that's that's even the thing with uh, parodies. That to, that to me is the equivalent of using a freeform poetry style, but not having a message to put behind it. Well, that's like, it's the same thing with parodies of just like. A parody, in essence, is supposed to actually be uh, an internalized critique of the work that it is parodying. But a lot of parodies just kind of use the structure of what they're parodying and sometimes don't even match up. But at the same time, that's some of the best parodies. Like, some of my favorite Weird Al songs are ones where he kind of ignores what the original song was about and just makes whatever. Yeah. And that's the 
that's kind of bad for the Like, <laughs> um, but it, it's the same thing, like, what I was saying about uh, the pop graphic. Mm -hmm. Um, if, <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, you can use that style all you want, but you're kind of abusing its point. You know, punk rock was meant to have a message, and simply using the style, and, you know, not having that message at its, the base of your work. Well, it's is, also... If you're gonna do that, I, don't, I won't even say necessarily that you can't do that, but if you're going to, you're edging into anti-punk. And it should, like, that's, my thing is always that art should have a, like, a, uh, if not a purpose, at least some kind of intent. Like, it, they should, it should at least be trying to say something. Even if that's, and that something doesn't have to be any huge lofty ideal, it can be as dumb as, like, I mean, Ice Cube, he made a uh, good day, and like, all he was trying to say there is like, I had a good day. It's like, yeah, yeah that, that's, yeah. that's solid. It's also, like, it, it was a form of expression, but then, like, if you look at a lot of hip-hop, I'd say, um, if you're, have you watched Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix? I would recommend it, because it's about a guy, he is an MC, but he doesn't really know that much about the roots of hip-hop, and so it's just a documentary series where he goes and he interviews the people who were there, and like, just like, figure works out what the whole history of the art form is. Right. And it's, yeah, it's it's a really good series. Yeah. Uh, you look at a uh, group like Home Thugs and Harmony, right? Mm -hmm. um, they talked about how, you know, the, one of the lines in their songs is, the shit we say is for the streets, not for you to go and do or to repeat. Please, if we can, no more murder. Why must I say, if we can, no more murder? So, they, for them, it was, this is what I have to do to survive. This is how my life is. This right. is what my family has to go through to live. We don't want this for everybody. You know, why is, why do we have to even say this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean that's the thing is that like the the strongest art will always be what resonates with the culture at the time and exemplifies it for the future to see. Yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna call this because like I, I I've done a pretty good amount and we're just under three hours now, so I think that's gonna be the end of this stream. Do you have any last words for the the people? Uh. 
uh, one over two said, even if you're going to ignore it, generally you want to try to know anatomy basics. Uh, true. Yeah. And uh, my parting words, I don't know. Um, let's go, come junkie. Let's go. I One last thing, with the anatomy basics, you can look at even people like Chuck Jones. The reason Chuck Jones is so interesting is because he learned all of the actual like basics of animation and anatomy and everything, and the conservation of volume. And then he said, but n fuck that, I'm just gonna do whatever. And because he understood what he was breaking, it made it so much more bizarre and Dadaist that it was, it was really interesting. You gotta know the rules to break. Exactly. All right. That's it. Good night, everybody. Be sure to check out... Well, my schedule right now is just this going forward. So I'm, I'm going to be go doing things daily, so keep an eye out for that. Look at my Twitter that's down there, and I'll be uh, posting before I go live. Go check out my YouTube or the Archive YouTube where I have all of my past streams. Um, you can also check out past broadcasts. And, uh, yeah, follow if you haven't, because I really could use more followers. I'd really appreciate it. All right. Thank you for watching. Good night. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.